It is Maction on this Wednesday night from DeKalb, Illinois. Good to have you with us as the Northern Illinois Huskies play host to the Chippewas of Central Michigan as we welcome you to ESPN College Football Prime Time and inside Husky Stadium. Hi, everybody. Mike Corey alongside Rocky Moyman. Week two here as Central Michigan comes off a win. Northern Illinois comes off a loss. What happened in week one there? Uh, um, each team wants to improve a lot from week one to week two, but for Central Michigan last year, going to the MAC title game, kind of picked up right where they left off last week, a big win versus Ohio, and they did it, Mike, with their defense. Fourth quarter, they got a three-point lead. They got to cling to that, hold that thing down, and their defense came up big. A couple big third-down stops here, and then on fourth down, Ohio has a small chance, but the linebacker, Troy Brown, knocks the ball away. Defense came up big, and then for Northern Illinois, last week against a really good Buffalo team, Played well, except for they were their own undoing. It was the miscues, it was ball security, Mike. They had four turnovers in the second half, three of which were returned for touchdowns. So that is a point of emphasis for them this week here. They feel like if they clean that up, they can come out here tonight and have a good ball game. Well, I feel like we got spoiled over this last week. A lot of people were out playing golf, I feel like, wherever you live, right? It was 70-something <laughs> degrees, and now we're down to the uh, normal 35 here at game time that you would expect in these uh, Maction Tuesday and Wednesday night affairs. It's it's not Maction in DeKalb without being in the 30s. Correct. Right, so here we go. Let's roll. Would you say you've done probably one Mac game ever in your life that wasn't <laughs> cold? Right. Usually like this. <laughs> Wouldn't have it any other way. Central Michigan won the toss, and they deferred. So Northern Illinois... And from the three-yard line, it's going to be Rudolph on the return, and he gets up across the 25. That's Trayvon Rudolph, and we'll see the Huskies for the first time tonight on offense. And Ross Bowers, the quarterback, the graduate transfer out of Cal, set to take the field here tonight. And again, same thing last week. Had a pretty nice game except for the turnovers. He had the fumble that we saw in the open there that was returned for a touchdown and interception return for a touchdown. He's got a challenge tonight, though, Mike, as we talked about Central Michigan's defense going to play a lot of aggressive man-to-man -man out there tonight. First plays a handoff, and it goes to Aaron Collins, and Collins gets up across the 30-yard line, picks up five yards on first down. And this is the key. they, they, they got to be able to establish a run. That's what Northern Illinois does. That's their what they've done bread and butter-wise the last 10 years. Collins is a nice running back, big kid, 6'2", about 215 pounds. Second down and five, and the first pass of the night. And on the slant is caught for the first down. Cole Tucker has it, and that's Tucker's fourth catch of the season. Good to move the chains. Nice little slant here. Again, you see a lot of press man. They're going to... Play that a lot on the outside. It's up to these Northern Illinois receivers, Tucker, Rudolph, uh, Richie. Got to win on one-on-one -on -one tonight. Collins stays in the backfield from the 39, first down and 10. Collins, and he's met right up front. Awesome job there in the tackle by Mohamed Diallo for Central Michigan on D. Yeah, th th this front four, explosive. And this is going to be an issue. You can't allow a big defensive tackle like Diallo to just come free off the edge. And Coach Hammock told us this week, we, if we block their edge guys, especially we block their defensive tackles, that, that is huge for us here tonight. Second down and 11 after the loss of one. Bowers, and a catch made again. Nice job this time on the outside, picked up by Tyrese Ritchie. And that is about a yard shy of the first down. You talk about the defense for Central Michigan, that's where their strength is, right in the up front four? Absolutely, the front four, and then they just play a lot of single high safety man-to-man. -man. Now you see some tempo from Northern Illinois. Quickly, and Central Michigan again. Diallo got the initial hit on Collins, and he's going to be brought down for a loss, so they tried to go quickly. And again, Diallo had a huge play to get in there and blow that one up. They, they did, and I like the idea of going tempo because this defense for Central Michigan is so aggressive. So you get up the line, and you kind of limit what the, the different looks and things that they can give you. But at the end of the day, you got to block their guys, and that's twice Northern Illinois allowed an edge player to become 
unblocked off the edge. And this is fourth down, and there's movement up front, and I would think that the Huskies are going to try to draw them off sides, which they may have done here on a fourth down and four. I mean, you're going to go for wow. it in your own 45. Yeah. yeah, I can't imagine they were going to snap the ball there, and they might have got a break. You know, Tico Brown looked like he got across a little bit too soon there for Central Michigan. Here's our referee, Greg Blum. Ball start. The Offense mm. number 70, mm. simulating the snap. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. Wow, so the offense gets called for it, and now they're going to obviously punt the ball as that was Marcus Cox. Yeah, see how it's on the left side there. Yeah, Yeah. Well, by him moving, and, and as you see, 59, yeah, Tico he, Brown he coming off. over. Right. Yeah, I mean, if you're the defense, I mean, you know, that's the position to play. I mean, the pressure's on the offense, right? right. On a fourth down and four as you're on 45. Right. Just, just wait. That D-line's communicating, hey, don't jump off sides. They're going to try to draw us. Fair catch called for here by Khalil Pimpleton. And Central Michigan on offense for the first time tonight. Just under three minutes gone by in this first quarter. And now it's Daniel Richardson's turn for Central Michigan. Redshirt freshman, and uh, I know you like his play, uh, Rocky, coming out of Miami, Florida. Yeah, he was a South Florida High School Player of the Year and uh, had his debut last week, and I thought it went pretty well. Uh, you hit open guys. Uh, I thought the second half, some of his fundamentals got away from me a little bit, but uh, he's got a bevy of wide receivers he can hit, and uh, again, looking to see what kind of improvement he can make here tonight in game two. Kobe Lewis is the running back. It starts behind Richardson, first and 10 for the Chippewas. Lewis has it. It's a nice block. Has a first down and more across the 40-yard line and knocked out of bounds of the 42. And that's the junior, Kobe Lewis, who's a former walk-on for this group. And you can see, look, they're just going to pack you in a phone booth here. Go man on man and then just find a little crease. And that's what Kobe Lewis does so well. Just give him a little crease, a little bit of daylight. He's going to find it and hit you big. Play fake. And taking a shot down the sideline. Dallas Dixon has it. A flag is thrown and Dixon's in for the touchdown. We'll check the flag, but Dallas Dixon on a big time run down the sideline for six if it stands. Interesting to see what the call is here. Holding defense number 15, the penalties decline, result of play is a touchdown. And Mike, here's what happened. You'll see the double move. You're going to come in the flat. Nope, and that's all he needs. Just a little bit of room there to beat Dylan Thomas in a nice ball by Daniel Richardson. And last week, Dallas Dixon was kind of the receiver that really stepped up. Seemed like he and Richardson had some good rapport, and they're starting that off again here tonight. Three catches last week for Dixon for 40 yards. This one goes for 58 yards and a touchdown. And Central Michigan strikes first here on the road. We'll be back right after this. Two plays, 76 yards in 35 seconds, and Central Michigan strikes first 7 0 with 11.33 to play first quarter here tonight from DeKalb, Illinois. Trayvon Rudolph back to return the Marshall Meter kick. Rudolph with blocking in front and gets up to the 28 yard line as we go back to the touchdown. And look, Northern Illinois watched a tape last week. Central ran the ball well, so we'll stack the box seven guys. That means a one on one on the outside. And then you'll see just a great pump fake. Boom, right there. Just, you just need a little bit of room. Just a one step on the defensive back. And that's all, again, Dixon needed. That, that's, that's what's going to be so tough here is they're going to force you to stack the box like that. Can your corners win one-on-one -on, -one on the outside here throughout the course of the night? 
Harrison Whaley is the running back now for Northern Illinois. He gets the call and not too much off the right side. Good job by once again that front four stacking up the line for the Chippewas defensively. Yeah. Troy Hairston was in on that play. He had three tackles for loss and three sacks last week. Number 13 for that Central Michigan defense. You'll see him right there. There's, there's Troy, really, really good player. Second down, the toss out to Whaley. He fumbles it and has to cover it back up. And Northern Illinois is going to lose major yardage back inside. They're on 20 yard line. Well, I mean, and you're just yeah, kind of shaking your hands. Yeah, we, we talked about it. Ball security was the issue last week. And here we are, the, like, about the fourth offensive play of the game. They put the ball on the turf. Can't have it. Second year for head coach Thomas Hammock, the former academic All American running back for Northern Illinois from 99 to 2002. Previously, the running back coach for the Ravens uh, yeah. for five seasons. Yeah, he's done a great job at the NFL ranks. And now you're in a third and 19, you know, so it's hard to even, you know, get an idea of what Northern Illinois wants to do here as they run it, of course, and the flag comes flying in, and another one at the end as well, as this is Ron Darius Gregory on the carry, and we'll get the calls again from Greg Lum. So they've already gone with three different running backs tonight, Collins, Whaley, and Gregory, but multiple flags on this play. There are two fouls in the offense, holding number 65, holding number 61. Both penalties are declined. Resolve to play brings fourth down. Just not sharp right now for Northern Illinois. And I know that was the focus. Here you see, here right in the middle, just twists the guy and throws him on the ground, you know, standing right in front of the referee. Yeah. Gonna get called. A takedown and a hold there, yeah. Ben Olsen and Logan Schernitz. Well, you gotta be careful too, because it was only two plays and a touchdown for Central Michigan, and now they're gonna get excellent field excellent position, field you position. Would think, right? right? And Pimpleton is back to return the punt here from Matt Ferentz. Something you don't see every day on the right. punt team. Fair catch, Pimpleton, and Central Michigan will start from the 31 with a 7-0 lead with 9.43 to play in the first when we come back. ESPN College Football is brought to you by GEICO. You could save even more by bundling home and car insurance. Happy Veterans Day, everyone, and thank you, and thank you for being with us here tonight for action on this Wednesday in Illinois. Jim McElwain, second-year head coach for Central Michigan, the MAC Coach of the Year last year, and for good reason, <laughs> uh, going from one win to eight wins, yeah. the uh, former Florida and Colorado State head coach. 2018, they go 1-11. and 11. Oh, my God, the sky is falling. Who can right this ship? They bring in Jim McElwain, and he wins eight games there in the regular season, and Go to the MAC championship game, just a, an amazing turnaround. And I, and I know these players just love, love playing for him. Second series on offense, keeper here by Daniel Richardson, and he runs up across the 45 yard line for a first down, a gain of 15 yards by the Chippewas quarterback. And he's not really a running quarterback, Mike, but if you're going to give it to him, he says, I'm, I'm going to take it. I mean, there's literally nobody to the outside there. The entire NIU defense washes to the offense's right, so uh, credit Richardson for just saying, hey, I'll, I'll take what the defense gives me here. Rumbling out there, there yeah. at 205. And now his pass is low and off the turf, incomplete. Back to McElwain for a second. Well, what does he bring to this group, to this team? You know, what, what's the change now if you're a Chippewa fan? What do you see? Well, I mean, first, it's the resume. This guy, he's coached the NFL. He's coached in Florida. He's, you know, he's got, you know, when he says something, he, he, he you, you know he's going to back it up because he's had a lot of success at a lot of different places. And I think that attitude right there, again, when he says, hey, boys, this is what we're going to do, you can have confidence that's going to work. Ja'Cory Sullivan on the catch, but... Here come the defenders for the Huskies. They can't bring him down, and he makes a little bit of something happen there. Gets up to the midfield line. 
And it's going to bring up a third down. I think there's also no nonsense, you know, with McIlwain coming in. I know his first year, he says, you know, guys, I don't really care about what you did here before. From this point, show me who you are, and let's go from here. And then that this is a fresh start, you know, kind of for everybody. It really is. And it's also, a, you know, something that the, the veterans who have been there say, look, I don't care what you've done in the past. you got to reprove yourself to the staff. Third down, handoff, and it's going to be well shy of the first down here as they went to Lewis. But were they thinking four down territory, or did they punt here? Seven nothing lead. Yeah, punt team coming on just across the midfield and, line. And that's a great job by the Husky defense to stop the bleed because they get a first down there. They go down and get another score up by two scores early in this football game. It's not looking good. So that's a nice job there. Yeah, I kind of sensed uh, from you there for a few moments that you're like, well, Northern Illinois, it, you don't want to let it get yeah, out of hand. I know it's early, but right, you can't let it get out good. of hand early. Yeah, that's, that's a good job by this very, very young defense, which we'll continue to talk about. A lot of freshmen playing on this Husky team. And they're going to start at their own 10 yard line when we come back. Just under eight minutes to go in the first on uh, Maction on this Wednesday from Illinois. Four teams. Two semifinals, New Year's Day, the college football playoff lives on ESPN. All right, coming up on Saturday, 3.30 Eastern, fresh off their double overtime win over Clemson. Second ranked Fighting <laughs> Irish taking on BC. I know you like that, Rocky. Yes. 7.30 Eastern and 4.30 Pacific, we got number 13, Wisconsin and Michigan from the big house in, in our, Ann Arbor. Let's start with uh, your team there, ND. How about that? How about that? Big game? win. Awesome. That's right. Yeah, good for them. And uh, what was a really fun game to watch there. Now here is Eric Collins who's taken down for a loss of four yards on first down. And I know right at the top of your list here tonight, Rocky, was the NIU offense. How are they going to account for that Central Michigan front seven pressure? Yeah. And apparently not so good here. Especially Troy Harrison, you know, a little under, kind of an undersized defensive end at five foot 11, but his leverage is so good. He gets underneath the pads of those offensive linemen. He's just really, really hard to block out there. Deep in their own territory on their third offensive drive of the night here for the Huskies. And a quick pass on the outside caught by Cole Tucker, and that's good for them to get a first down up to the 23-yard line. And that's the thing, right? You got to try to spread them out a little bit here, right? Get these guys out on the edge. Yeah, I think you do. You just you know, you create a clearer picture for the quarterback. That's just a good job of one wide receiver goes up the field, clears it out, and you get Tucker coming in behind. First down from the 23. Tucker goes in motion there on the outside. This pass well overthrown, incomplete. And he wanted him that time again. Defending over there was Richard Bowens. Coach Hammock now, you know, in his second season. I mean, this is a Northern Illinois team that has been so successful. You go all the way back to 2010. I mean, they, you know, they've won four MAC championships. They've been in 10 bowls over the last 12 years. So, you know, he's taking over a, a program that's got a lot of tradition. But what, what's he trying to build here? Well, the main thing is he's got to get back to Northern Illinois football, which is tough, physical, and establishing the run. Last year, Mike, they were ninth in the MAC in rushing. That's just not a characteristic of, of a Northern Illinois team. Got to get back to run the football. Collins now on a second down run up to the 27 yard line, picks up four yard line, picks up four yards. And the winning percentage, you know, you go back to this since 2010, it's been Northern Illinois. I mean, it's, they have had 91 incredible. wins yeah. in the MAC, and that's number one. And, and he really thinks it's it's not going to be a, a long turn. He likes these young guys on this roster. He says, hey, we've got the players on this roster right now and the ones coming in next year that can really, really be special. Mac title in 2018, five and seven overall last year. Now with a third down and six from their 27. Bowers almost intercepted, it's tipped and caught. And right at the first down marker by Trayvon Rudolph, he thinks it's a first down and they give it to him here. <laughs> I believe, let's see, he's right at the stick. And look at that, I mean, Man. 
he's, it looks like Bowen's going to step in front for a pick six. It goes through his hands, and Rudolph able to haul it in. Signal is first down. They've moved the chain. There was a player down. It's Mohamed Diallo, who's made some nice plays early already in this game to the Chippewas. Down on one knee, it'll help him up. And if this stands, this is some po something positive. It's going to give some juice back to this Northern Illinois team because first couple of drives, they hit a bunch of penalties, drops, just not been able to get anything going. And, uh, a good way to keep this drive going. I mean, all these teams right around the country, I mean, everybody's in different stages, right? Yeah. The progress of the season. This is game two. I mean, right it's, now. it's November 11th. Right. This is their second football game. It's, right. it's absolutely crazy. Normally, by this time, teams would have eight plus games under their belt. So they're still figuring things out, still looking at their personnel, yeah. still fundamentals, things are going on. Yeah. First down from the 33. Bowers outside, and a nice catch made. And it's going to be good for a first down over the 48 yard line. It's still rolling there as Tyrese Ritchie and pushed across <laughs> midfield right into the NIU sideline. The sideline likes that, Mike. That's good stuff. Same thing, little, kind of same similar route combination. You get two wide receivers coming up. One bends inside, the other goes, breaks towards the sideline. Falls in. Richie with a career day in week one, nine catches, 106 yards. First catch of the night here. Collins, burst of speed, and Aaron Collins down the sideline, steps out. At the 30, it's a first down for Northern Illinois. Now they're starting to get something on this drive. As I said, Mike, they got to get the run game going, and you're going to see tight end right there is going to come around and create a nice hole for Collins. See him reading it around. Boom, chips him out. And that, that's a great job just seeing the blocker, kicking him out, getting forward. Great stuff. It's like a couple drives, but here they are now in their third offensive set of the night. Moving down to the Central Michigan 30-yard line. Collins again. And gets tripped up. About four yards on that play. And they've rotated the backs here a little bit already tonight. So you got Collins, a junior, but then you have two true freshmen. We've already seen Harrison Whaley, 30, and Rondarius Gregory, 22. Whaley's back in now. Yeah, and Haley, or excuse me, Whaley, Coach Hammond really likes him. He's a 10, 700 meter guy coming out of high school. Again, just a freshman. He's got the physical skills. It's just, you know, can he, does he understand defenses? Does he understand where the five technique lines, where the three technique lines, all that sort of thing? It's going to take some time. Hand off to Richie. And Richie's going to be taken down a couple yards shy of the first down. Good tackle there by George Douglas, among others, for Central Michigan. And George Douglas, their leading tackler last week at the linebacker position. It's going to be hard to outrun this Central Michigan defense to the sideline. This boy's going to run out there. But I like the idea. You, we see some interior runs. Now we'll try to hit the perimeter. Just try to keep this defense off balance. Yeah, they've done a really nice job of changing it up on this drive here. Third and two. Collins is back in, gets the call, and he's going to be taken down on the backfield by Troy Hairston. He called his name out a ton tonight, <laughs> and it else? continues, and it's fourth down. Here it is right there. Yep. He just, just splits. He, he's, his get off, Mike, is incredible. And as I said earlier, just his leverage, being a little bit of a shorter guy, gets underneath the pads of the offensive lineman. But man, the burst off the edge. Huskies keeping the offense out there here. Fourth down. And the fake and the pass is incomplete. They wanted Collins. And Troy Brown there for Central Michigan. And they will take over on downs. I thought they ran up pretty quick there on that. What was your take? Yeah, on they, you they were trying to go quick. Element surprise, but Troy Brown wasn't fooled at all. And what I would have liked to have seen there is usually when you want to try to get your running back out in the flat like that, you take a wide receiver and you run him across the formation, try to get a natural pick on the linebacker. 
But there's no one there to pick him. So you just say, okay, there's a running back. I'll run out and get him. Well, and, and not even if Brown wasn't able to make that play. They had another guy right yeah. there as well. So they kind of smelled that one out. Most of the time, again, when you're getting that, when you try to get the running back in the flat, you have a tight split by a wide receiver, running shallow across middle, try to get him to pick the linebacker, and then you get the, the running back in the flat, but he wasn't there. We're going wildcat here now with Darius Bracey for Central Michigan as they take over back on offense, and he's taken down after a couple of yards. And the Wildcat, Mike, is something we saw Central Michigan use about 10 times last week. They really like that. You know, just, uh, you know, it's all about numbers in the box. And, okay, now you don't have a quarterback. You've got to count for that quarterback and it, it now is a runner. And I expect to see some wrinkles off the Wildcat here tonight, too. They got Lewis and Nichols back there. They're going to hand off to Lewis. And he's still going to be about four yards shy of a first down up to the 29-yard line. And the tackle there by Jeffrey Griffin for Northern Illinois. Third and four for the Chippewas. And normally the go-to receiver is, is Khalil Pimpleton. And I believe that's him right there. Led the Mac in receiving last year. Played a lot of football. In the slot to the top, they go right in his direction. The pass is overthrown incomplete. Actually wanted Ja'Cory Sullivan that time. And it's going to be fourth down for Central Michigan. So they move quickly, but to no avail. And they'll have to punt with 117 to play here in this first quarter. And kind of saw this a bit last week, Mike. If you watch that game, when Richardson did miss, he tended to miss high like yeah. that. And Sullivan was open. Nice big target like that. The ball just sailed on him a bit. So Luke Elzinga will punt here for Central Michigan. Cole Tucker back to the turn. And a fair catch is signaled four at the 26 yard line. How about that rush defense that Central Michigan, you know, has right now and what they present and up front. <laughs> Talking about it coming into the game, they look good against Ohio last week and kind of picking, picking up right where they left off. You know, Mike, you often talk about you got to run to be able to, uh, uh, to pass, right? I just think this Northern Illinois team might need to pass and I might need to get the ball to the outside, kind of stretch that defense a little bit, then they can start to run off of it, but they got to have some success on the perimeter of that field in the pass game. Yeah, look at this. Averaging just 122 yards, and then tonight only 31. That is getting this done. season. Yeah, I mean, it's early. Obviously, it's only the second game, but top 25 in the country in terms of what they did last week. And it's Harrison Whaley for Northern Illinois. George Douglas on the tackle for Central Michigan. Already a couple of stops for him tonight. He was the leader last week with nine. A little bit of tempo here from the Huskies. We have seen some passes to the outside. I mean, Cole Tucker, mm -hmm. uh, 18, Tyrese Ritchie. So they're trying to, I think, spread out this defense a little bit. Let's see what happens here on second down. Bowers, and there it is again. And the catch is made for the first down. And that's Ritchie for another grab just across the sticks. So good job there. Yeah, they've had some success here. This is good. And Central Michigan is going to give you some opportunities. They're going to play a lot of high single safety, which means they're going to be manned up on the outside. And Go one-on-one, -on -one, see if your wide receivers can make it happen. First down, Bowers. Pressure hit as he throws, and it's overthrown incomplete. Took a big hit after he threw that one away, trying to get it to Cole Tucker. And that is going to be the end of the first quarter. Northern Illinois had a nice drive previously, but we're stopped on downs. What happens here? They trail it 7-0 on Veterans Day on this Wednesday night. You're watching Maction on ESPN. End of one. We're back with the second quarter from DeKalb, Illinois, as the Chippewas lead it 7-0. Start of the second quarter, welcome back. Northern Illinois football from their own 37. It's second down and 10. The quarterback, Ross Bowers. 
Takes it from the shotgun, and the pass is off the mark, incomplete. Looking for Cole Tucker. Who has a couple grabs tonight. Bowers at quarterback, and I think about it when he was back at Cal. He's a graduate transfer from Cal. You know, he had a sit behind Jared Goff, <laughs> of course, with the Rams, and Davis <laughs> Webb, who was drafted by the Giants. Right. You know, so, you know, a couple of well, talented players there. Then here's come here now with a second year at uh, Northern Illinois. He did a good job. Had over 2,100 yards last year and kind of a shortened season. He had some concussions last year. He does a good job. Third down. Gets rid of it, and it's incomplete. Wow. Trying to get to Collins, and he was unable to grab it, so it's fourth and ten. So their first four possessions of the game will go down as punt, punt, turnover on downs, and another punt. And, and, and that's unfortunate because Bowers was looking deep. There's nothing there. Central Michigan had great covers on the back end, so he doesn't force it, dumps it off to the running back who's going to get a first down, and he drops it. You know, a young team, they're just not at a point right now, Mike, on their roster where they can afford to have a lot of little mistakes like that. They can't overcome those things. So that's going to be an issue for them as they go forward. Well, we had some action uh, yesterday, and we've got, of course, here again tonight. What happened uh, yesterday? You watched some of the games here. I mean, Buffalo looked really good against a, a very good Miami team. That was surprising, that score. That was surprising. Miami won the MAC last year and, and looked really good in their opening game. Uh, Buffalo is also another team picked to win the MAC. Came out and looked great. Ohio got back after suffering the defeat to Central Michigan last week. And uh, Kent State. And a decent team as well. Got that quarterback, Dustin Crum, up there. He's doing a good job. Yeah, big win for them last night. 7 0 here, Central Michigan. Richardson hit as he throws. Deep ball, and this one is going to be picked off. It's intercepted. Northern Illinois' Jordan Gandy on the pick as there was major coverage back there. And the Huskies have it back after the turnover. And this is a ball that Daniel Richardson should not have thrown. And he hung in the pocket tough, and I give him credit for that. And they bring the blitz, you're gonna get hit. And... But really, it was just a great job of Gandy covering a lot of ground. Right there, he's open, but he does not account for Gandy, who had the deep third on that, on that play, comes across the field, makes a nice pick. It's a great job. This is a you know, Jordan Gandy, just a sophomore. They have two starting safeties that are both freshmen. A young secondary come up playing big. Now Bowers back on, and his pass is off the mark and complete again, looking for Tucker. I mean, yeah, they wanted Dallas Dixon, who's the guy who had the touchdown catch right. earlier. Right. Uh, but a better job defensively that time of the Huskies. Yeah, j just a, a, a ball that Richardson shouldn't have thrown. You got to see the whole field. I think he focused in and said, okay, he hadn't had the safety maybe beat, but didn't account for Gandy coming across the field, making up some ground. Second down and 10. Collins and wrapped up right at the line. It's been that way all night. It's Jaquez Briston, Bristol, excuse me, along with Troy Brown. First team all Mac last year, and he, he really last year was his first year playing the linebacker position. He was a DB you know, coming in here to, to, to Central, and boy, he's done such a great job. 91 tackles last season, 16 and a half tackles for loss. Top tackler with 91, as you said, three interceptions. I mean, you know, to just to change positions like that, like you're saying, to be that dominant, you know, that just shows, you know, some pretty good football smarts. And that's your spot there. And it was impressive. Bowers, a lot of time back there, but nobody's open downfield. They're on a third and ten. Finally launches it, and it is broken up. And it'll be fourth down. So back there on coverage, Alonzo McCoy. Nice play there. Well, you said it, Mike. Had a lot of time. The offensive line did a great job blocking. And late, he tries to, tries to find Tucker down the sideline there. And, and that's a play, Mike, where I, I think it had been fourth and four, something like that. Bowers just takes off and scrambles because he has some room, but being fourth and ten like that, it's just it makes it all much that much tougher to pick up that first down with your legs. He's been eyeing in on Cole Tucker a lot here in this first half. And 
Central Michigan again ready for it. They'll have it back here. A minute and a half gone by second quarter, and they're hanging on to a 7-0 early lead. Central Michigan coach Jim McElwain told me he was very appreciative of the transparency of Mac Commissioner John Steinbrecher and what they've done to get these players and the teams back ready to play. I know they were the first to cancel, maybe the last yep. to come back, and they were getting a little bit of slack and stuff for that. But you know what, Rocky? I mean, let's think about it here. With everything going on right now, I don't think anybody should be given, you know, too much of a hard time with the decisions that are made. And Coach McElwain was very, you know, impressed and thankful of the communication, as Lou Nichols carries here for the Chippewas, of the communication of the conference and what right. they did with the coaches and the stringency of the testing and with the medical doctors. Well, and that's what it came down to was every school had to get on the same page of how many times a week are we gonna test, what players need to be tested, how much does the testing cost, that sort of thing. It took a little while to, to figure out, but I, I credit the MAC for once they did fi get it figured out, they said, okay, we, we gotta find a way to get this season back going. But that, that's the big one right there. When they found out they could, wh when the testing became cost effective enough where they could test four times a week, that was the big difference. That's allowed this whole season to be able to be played here. Yeah, it's more than any others, and uh, they've done a really nice job of it. And again, as we've talked about, you know, safety and everything that's happening right now, I think we all see it. You know, numbers going up. I mean, you gotta, you got to have this in place. As Nichols carries three times in a row here for the Chippewas, and he's going to be a yard shy of the first down. So, ball at midfield, fourth and one. I, I, I think you go for it here. I know that this where it is right in smack middle of the field here, but Central Michigan, I know they're replacing some guys on the offensive line, but... They're a running team, and I think they think they can impose their will on this NIU defense. It's Nichols again, and four in a row, and he has it. First down for Central Michigan. How about that? Yeah. And, and that was big. I, I think it was a, a moment in the game where Central Michigan needed to say, hey, look, let, let, we got to start taking this to this team. And they did. They just packed the box up there, get the H back rolling around, and, and do just that. That's, that's a Good momentum swing right there for Central Michigan. Get it back on their side. Now they'll change it up, and it's Darius Bracey on the carry. Three yards there to the 46. How about college game day? And live from the Masters. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. That would be great. Let's do a good job with that. Second down. And the pass over the top is caught by Tyrone Scott. And he has a first for the chips to the 36. And I'm, I'm glad to see Tyrone Scott get back involved in this game. Last week, I, I, I thought he underperformed for what the, the kind of player that I think he can be. Six foot three, you know, 100, 200 pounds. He's a game changing type player. And, and I think someone that uh, the Central Michigan team needs to really get going here and if he can respond and show that he can make some plays well, that's going to be good for him. And the give goes to Kobe Lewis but you know, I think you're right back to Scott 19 for the Chippewas. I mean last year he had 37 catches for 650 yards which yeah. is an average of a team best 17.7 .7 yards a catch and then you know it was what week one last week yeah. and he had yeah. two yeah. catches for 16 yards. That's right. But, but the issue is there's just not a lot of games to be able to, if you start slow, you you got to get going fast in this season. There's just no two ways about it. Only six games to be played. And again, Lewis. And I'll tell you what, I, I've been impressed with how Northern Illinois has stopped the run. Yeah. I mean, this is a team that they, they showed in week one against an Ohio defense that's always good at stopping the run. And they were able to put up 184 yards rushing. You know, we saw number 11 there, Kyle Pugh, get in there to make that tackle for the Huskies, and it's now third and eight. There's Pimpleton again. He's the, the go-to receiver here. And a flood the left side, in a bunch formation. That's what we're going to get right there. Yep, there it was. And you called it, and he makes the catch. Is it good enough for the first? Might be a little bit shy. Pimpleton, though, on the reception. Transfer out of Virginia Tech. And yeah, they get kind of the natural pick there with the two 
wide receivers cross and get Pimpleton out in the flat. And so now it looks like it's going to be fourth and less than one. And this is a no doubter right here. Already converted one fourth down and a yard to keep this drive alive. Now fourth and the same thing. And Lewis on the carry, and he is going to have it. Gets to the 25 yard line just enough. And Kobe Lewis will keep this stellar drive moving here for the Chippewas. They've done a nice job on this one. Yeah, Kobe Lewis had a thousand rush yards last year, along with Jonathan Ward, who also had a thousand. So <laughs> Jim McElwain, you know, they were playing Central, playing football in Central Michigan in the MAC. You got to be able to run the ball. Catch is made. That's Jacory Sullivan. And I think Central's doing a really nice job of spreading things around here, right? I mean, they first they go to the run, they just start pounding right. the run in your face, balance. and now they're going out to the outside of the pass. Yeah, you just got to be balanced. They've done a good job with that here tonight. And it also makes Daniel Richardson, the quarterback, comfortable. Just his second start at the college level. Wildcat. Bracey. Pimpleton in motion, fake to him, he keeps it. And up the middle, he gets tripped up after a couple, and we've seen that a couple times already tonight with Darius Bracey, the junior, who's a former defensive back. And now back there running Wildcat. Kind of the, the same similar style of Wildcat we saw mm -hmm. last week is either the, you know, give it to the jet motion or just turn into a north-south run by either Bracey or Kobe Lewis at the quarterback position. I just wonder if we'll get some sort of wrinkle or a pass off that tonight. Play action, Richardson, and the pass is caught. Templeton trying to make a couple of moves and finally brought down at around the seven-yard line. Still shy of the first down. The third and manageable here. Now you got a lot of options in this area. What do you like for this next play? Well, for right here, I like getting Richardson outside the pocket. He's not a six foot five quarterback, right? He's you know he's five foot ten. So get him outside the pocket. Give him a clearer picture. Now third and you know, you always there, there's Pimpleton right there. And we're gonna run it. Nichols, and he's not gonna have it here. So Northern Illinois, and that's. James Esther that steps up to make that play. Yeah, some penetration. That's great. And James Esther, a guy that played well last week. Thomas Hammocks was really happy with how he played. Now here we go. Can Central Michigan go three for three on fourth down on this drive? You're going to pack them in here tight. You're going to try to get some natural picks and then explode out here. Nichols in the backfield. Low snap. Richardson rolling, rolling, hit, and he's not going to even be able to get rid of it. And sacked, and Northern Illinois will take over on downs with 6.33 to play first half as he gets crushed out of bounds. And Richardson, he's got to find a way to get rid of this ball, but credit to this young Northern Illinois defense for holding. ESPN College Football is brought to you by GEICO. You could save even more by bundling home and car insurance. We're in DeKalb, Illinois tonight for Maction on this Wednesday night, 7 nothing Central Michigan. Could have been more though, right, Rocky? What happened here? Yeah, I just think Jim McElroy overthought this a little bit. You, you've gone for it twice on fourth down. You've run the football. It's fourth and one right here and just a, I don't know, a roll out to a single receiver to the outside. I, I think you it, it, you either take the points right there with a field goal or, or you run the ball the way you have on the other two fourth downs. Hand off here to Collins for Northern Illinois trying to get some breathing room. Yeah, I mean, I can understand not going for the field goal because they already converted on two fourth downs. So you already get down to that point. You feel like, well, I'm as well. But they were running the ball successfully. I mean, yeah. I guess I'm doing my best Thursday morning quarterbacking here, if you will, because it's Wednesday night. <laughs> but, but, but yeah. and, you, and they've run the Wildcats so effectively. That, that's yeah. why you do it. You bring it, you get the numbers with, you know, you, the, the running quarterback, like that bringing in Kobe Lewis at that spot. Yeah, I just think they overthought that. Collins again, and it's that 
you know, front four that's really made it tough tonight for Central Michigan. Yeah, and, you, and you, by the way, you didn't need to go to the end zone because you only needed the one yard for the right, first. And, right. You know, could have been first and goal. But nonetheless, still with a 7 nothing advantage, playing really well here on both sides of the ball. And you got Northern Illinois back in their own territory, and they're one play away from getting this ball back yeah, as it's third down and four. Yeah, and they got to find a way to get Ross Bowers comfortable here. He's having some success with the easy throws to the outside here, and they've just kind of got off off balance here. We've only seen one third down conversion tonight, as you see for the numbers, and that's from Northern Illinois. One for six on third down. Bowers pressure and taking a deep shot, and that one is broken up and incomplete. Wanted Trayvon Rudolph and Richard Bowens was there on coverage for the Chippewas. Great coverage there by Bowens. Gets in phase, and then once he's in good shape, is able to get his eyes back to the quarterback, reach the right arm up, and knock that ball away. Mike, that was great. You know, sometimes you'll see the wide, you know, the defensive backs when it's a deep ball like that, they'll either not get their eyes back to the quarterback, or they'll get them back too early, and that slows them down, allows that receiver to get more further ahead. That was a good job making sure get your right with your coverage, then you turn around and look for the football. Pimpleton's going to let it pass, and he picks it up on a hop. And now he's got some running room, and Khalil Pimpleton with a blocker in front into Northern Illinois territory in a solid return. And that's going to set Central Michigan up nicely here when we come back. 4.56 to play in the first half. 7-0 lead for the Chippewas. Terrence Crawford is ESPN's pound for pound boxing champ, and he'll try to defend his WBO welterweight belt against Kel Brook Saturday night in Las Vegas. Don't miss that. Coverage begins at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and ESPN Plus. Good return from Khalil Pimpleton after the punt. And now in some trouble, and getting hit was Richardson, and he lost the ball, and it's recovered by his offensive lineman, Derek Smith, the right tackle. So they avoid a huge scare there, but they get a huge loss in the process of 11 yards. <laughs> Richardson, extremely lucky here. And wow, what a great job on the rush there by Kennedy. He was trying to hit Dallas Dixon down the seam. He had him if it weren't for the pass rush. Now they go on the ground here to Kobe Lewis to try to get some of the yards back. Lost from that play by Kennedy, as you mentioned, Rocky. So Kennedy on defense for Northern Illinois already has a fumble recovery. He can add a forced fumble to that and a nice play and a timely play. Look at this. First drive, you had two plays at 76 yards, including the 58-yard touchdown to Dallas Dixon. But since then, yeah. And hmm. Central Michigan's had some opportunities to, to try to put this Northern Illinois team away early. They haven't been able to do it. Play fake Richardson, now they try to dump it off and it's incomplete for Lewis. And that series went south rather quick. And it didn't take a long time. Fourth and 16 now, it's still 349 to play first half. Yeah, just some missed opportunities offensively and they're just allowing this young Husky team who probably on paper isn't matched up right with the Central Michigan, allowing them to hang around, giving them a shot. Mm. on Northern Illinois from the 15-yard line. And Ross Bowers, a graduate transfer from Cal, coming back onto the field as we return. Mike Corey, Rocky Boyman with you tonight from Illinois. What's Bowers got to do here and the, and the yeah. team collectively to get things going? Yeah, I, I think they got to start him off here with some high percentage throws to the outside. Got to get him into rhythm. We saw that earlier in, in the second quarter there. Once they gave him some easy completions, got that offense in a rhythm here. I think you start with that, then maybe you can start hitting some of those deeper seam routes. They'll start from the 15. Aaron Collins is in the backfield. Play fake to him. The pass goes out to Daniel Crawford. And he is taken down after a gain of five. There you go. The high, high percentage throw. And I'd also maybe think about going a little tempo here, too. 
Get a nice easy completion to the back in the flat there. Get back up and do it again. Huskies with all three of their timeouts still. In a fast moving first half. Tucker goes in motion. Hand off to Collins and ekes out about a yard. It's going to be third and four. Robbie Stewart, 71. And this D line makes it tough to yeah. run against. They sure right? do. Some mean looking hombres up front there for Central Michigan. And there's Harrison, who you've talked about a lot tonight. They've just been so excited for his play. Three sacks in week one for number 13. Yeah, that's a heck of a debut. Third down conversion. It's hard to come by tonight. One of 13 combined for both teams. And it looks like they're going to take a timeout and talk it over. Third and four. And we've got two minutes and 18 seconds to play in this first half. We remind you again on Saturday. Coming up at 3.30 Eastern, it's Notre Dame. And they're in action against Boston College. Number two ranked Notre Dame after that huge win against Clemson. <laughs> and then 7.30, we got Wisconsin and Michigan from the big house in Ann Arbor. What about Michigan? Now, how good is Indiana? You know, I yeah. know they lost, but I mean, Indiana's a good team. Yeah, a good team that you're really taking advantage now. They're kind of in the spotlight here, but uh, you know, with, with, with Notre Dame, you know, getting that big win, that was a program-defining win that yeah. they had. But uh, I, I remember a, a young 13-year-old Rocky Boyman <laughs> back in 1993 watched Notre Dame beat the number one ranked Florida State Seminoles. Oh my God, we're going to the championship. Yeah. We're going to win it all next week. We play Boston College and lose. <laughs> Does history repeat itself this weekend? We shall see. Yeah, why did we have to build that graphic, <laughs> right? Bowers and a pass incomplete. Looking for Rudolph and a good job there coverage wise again Central Michigan. That's Reed. That was Devonnie Reed. And yeah. his team just closes on the ball yeah. so well. You know, the, the secondary especially. Once that ball's in the air, they, they do a good job, Mike, of reading the quarterback's eyes. They plant that back foot and come downhill quick. Great job by Reed. One for eight on third down is Northern Illinois tonight. Matt Ferentz having trouble with the snap. The ball is loose and it scoots into the end zone and it's pushed out of the back of the end zone. And it's going to be a safety here and a flag is thrown. Liam Sorahan knocked it out 83 for Northern Illinois. It all started with a low snap, Mike. And the punter tried to pick it up and get it going, but what happened? Illegal bat, offense, penalties decline, result of play is a safety. Yeah, you know, a, a cold night. Low snap yeah. off the turf, yep. It was a low snap, and they just couldn't get it going. And Boy, think about right there, though, had. Well, and that's a smart play there, be, you know, taking the safety, kicking it out and taking the safety rather than let Central Michigan fall in for a touchdown in the end zone. That's well, not, you know, what you love to do, but it's the right play there. No, and, and think about this, uh, 33 there in white for Central Michigan. You saw Kumanu Gawili, uh, senior linebacker there in on that special teams play. He almost pounced right, right on that at the right. two yard line. Right. So they would have had it at the two. I mean, it, yeah, I mean, it was heads up thinking to scoot that ball off the back, but nevertheless, they get the safety. Now they're going to kick it back to Central Michigan, who's going to have 2.05 and three timeouts to try to get another score before half. Pebbleton from his own 32 yard line. Bursts ahead, a spin move, and gets him to the 46 of Northern Illinois. So outstanding field position, as you called it, Rocky, now with three timeouts remaining and a minute 59 to work with. So 
Not a bad job there. Week two here of action and in play in the MAC. How about what is not going to be played this week uh, due to COVID, of course? Man. man, it was just like an onslaught of just postponements and cancellations. Every day. Yeah, yeah. last and couple of days. It's just a shame. Some of these games, you know, Missouri has one player test positive, but because of contact tracing, a bunch of other players are out, and that's it's just a mess right now that the Mac has been lucky just a six game season knock on wood they've not had any games canceled but man it's unfortunate that's three of the top five teams in the country yeah, okay exactly and I don't even know when they're going to be able to make up some of these guys you see postponed there on a lot of them but when Rocky yeah. I mean, that December 19th date I think keeps getting flown out there like <laughs> you can play five games yeah, on that day. Play it's like, five well, games out to the 19th. that's right um, I don't know how many more times yeah. you could do that. I mean, and the Big Ten has absolutely no room for error. There's yeah. no make-up dates at all built into that schedule. And, and, and you start to think about, you know, golly, does, if Ohio State has a game canceled, and what happens if they get another one canceled, and they end up this, okay, they're undefeated, but they've had six wins, five wins. Is, is that good enough to give them a spot in the college football playoff when a team like, say, Cincinnati could potentially go 12-0 uh, you know, it's, it's just really, it's not their fault, it's just the circumstances, but what games are played and what are not played is going to be a factor in the whole postseason here. I want to comment there in a moment. Jordan Cole is the injured player down. We're getting word uh, zero for Northern Illinois, a junior linebacker on a special teams play there. Let's hope that he's all right. A lot of people surrounding him, so they attend to Jordan Cole. But I, uh, I understand what you're saying, Rocky. And we're going to step aside actually for a moment. We'll come back. Minute 59 to play first half. 9 nothing Central Michigan. Well, we give our best to Jordan Cole, Jr., wearing zero for Northern Illinois. He got hit with a helmet to his left leg on that last special team sequence. Yeah, that, that was a tough one, Mike. That's, you know, a, a very horrific and, and unfortunate injury to Cole. We will show you here quickly in the zero. Yeah, just kinda he's just got a helmet yeah, to that left gets leg. Gets a helmet to the leg. Guy. It's kind of caught yeah. up underneath mm -hmm. him. And, yeah, that's just, mm, man. Coach Hammock reacting after that. Yeah, he, mm -hmm. yeah that's, that's all we're going to show on that one. So Cole's taken off. Our prayers and well wishes to him as they cart him off here with a minute 59 to go in this first half. Central Michigan 9 nothing. And they will have the ball first down and 10 from the 41 yard line of Northern Illinois. So a chance for more points here to really kind of put the hurt on already a two possession game. I know it's only 9 nothing. Uh, but there's only been over, just over 100 yards of offense from Northern Illinois in this game, right, Rocky? So you're not yeah. too threatened by what they can do offensively. And, and Daniel Richardson needs to put together a, a nice drive here. He's been a little bit up and down, very inconsistent so far in this game. Missed a couple open wide receivers. Yeah, and this ball gets batted down at the line of scrimmage by Rayshon Thomas, who gets in there with the play. So that's kind of two in a row on a first down that's Got these last two drives off to a bad start. Michael Kennedy had a, sh a strip, and then this time the ball was batted down by Thomas. And, and again, it's just tough. You got a five foot ten quarterback trying to throw from the pocket there and get the interior pressure up in his, in his face like that. So a couple times we've seen that batted down balls. I, I, I looked at, you know, try to get him outside the pocket a little bit, give him a cleaner look. <laughs> Same deal. Yeah. You said it. And, yeah. I, yeah. And look, credit Northern Illinois for watching game tape, knowing who their opponent is, know they have a five foot ten quarterback out there and trying to time their jump and get up in that window. Pierre Sopong, 99. Look, the, the, the clock's going off in the head. They know, hey, look, when he gets ready to cock that arm back and throw it, get the arms up, bat it down. That's just good awareness football by Northern Illinois. No doubt. Third down at 10 now from the 41 yard line. Still with all three of their timeouts here. Northern Illinois thinking maybe we'll get this ball back and another chance at it.
Richardson. And now he's going to be sacked, taken down from major loss. And that is Michael Kennedy in there again, along with Jeffrey Griffin Jr. In Northern Illinois, three plays in a row, stellar on defense. Same thing, pressure right up the middle. Bit of a delayed play. Pew, too, too, excuse yeah. me. Yeah. He was the one that hit him first. Yeah, six year linebacker and coming up making a big play. Yeah, Kyle Pugh. And, and I was wondering why Thomas Hammock wasn't calling the timeout, but he did finally get one in after about four or five extra seconds ticked off that clock. Well, depending on the field position here, too, you know, they want to be careful. They'll have one timeout remaining. Yeah. Yeah, on an offense that, you know, they, they try to take a couple of shots. I just don't know of the timing of when they have been trying to do that. You know, they went deep on a, on a third and short play. Right, right. I, and that's why I just thought, again, it, it just get him some easy throws, get him yeah. into a bit, a bit of a rhythm. Now Coach McElwain's group up 9 nothing here. Now we'll punt with fourth down and 18. Luke Elzinga. Cole Tucker standing inside of his own 10 yard line. Short kick. Yeah, fair catch as he comes up to 22. Now we shall see. Minute 32 remaining. One timeout left for the Huskies. Ross Bowers and company. And there you see it just 2.6 yards per play. 71 total yards tonight. Now, right now, you really have no choice but to start peppering the outside parts of the field. That you do have one timeout, so if for some reason something is wide open in that middle of the field, you can go ahead and take it with the one timeout left. But it should be a lot, a lot of throws to the outside. Powers airs it out. And it is intercepted. It's picked off by Brian Edwards for Central Michigan. And a flag is thrown back at the 15-yard line as Bowers went down. So hang on. But Brian Edwards on the interception. During the play, personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense, number 13. 15-yard penalty to be added at the end of the cut. Mm. And, and Brian Edwards, I mean, this is perfect corner play. Getting in phase with the wide receiver, then you turn around, and then you just fight for the ball. Grab it, snatch it away from the wide receiver. A fantastic play by the Florida transfer. But then here it is, the late hit. Oh, low. Wow, low hit by Troy Harrison. He's a senior. He knows better than that. I mean, you've had so many good things to say about Harrison yeah. tonight. Yeah, and that's going to. Yeah, that really bails out. Mm -hmm. Negates a big play. Northern Illinois, yeah, certainly does. Going to have the ball back instead. And you get a free 15 yards out of it, too. Yeah. Push them up here to the 38 and first down and 10. And the carry for Richie. Look at the wide receiver out there, Tyrese Richie, but not much is happening. Clock is running, minute 15 to go. Bowers dumps it off. Richie yeah, again. Bounds. And he does. He gets out of bounds to the 46, so that will stop the clock. Two yards shy of a first down with a minute even to go in this first half. Yeah, I like going to Richie here. Very dependable wide receiver at nine catches last week. They still have that one timeout remaining. We'll see how big that roughing the passer penalty ends up being here if Northern Illinois is able to get points on this drive. Bowers looking at Collins the whole way, and he is taken down in the backfield for a loss, and that is by George Douglas, the leading tackler from a week ago, and that'll be a two-yard loss. And man coverage, George Douglas, not fooled by the, the motion. 
bring him down for loss. Now it's fourth down here. Fourth and four, 30 seconds remain. And, you know, they want to be careful, right? Because, I mean, if they don't get this and they go for it, Central Mission is going to have it back with, with three time Yeah. Ups. This is very, very risky here. They're going to try to line it down play. as best they can. Or are they even going to go for it here? Yeah, they're going to try to draw them off. That's the right call, I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> you know, had you not gotten that? Fourth and four with 10 seconds left. Yeah, punt this one deep and get to the half. And Northern Illinois had, a, had an opportunity there. You know, they get the penalty, keep the drive going, free 15 yards. Goes back to first down and just couldn't really get anything going. You got to give a lot of credit to the Central Michigan defense, though, for flying around the way they do and doing a good job. How do you feel about Northern Illinois being down only nine nothing here at this point? I, I think in looking in a lot of ways, I mean, your defense has played in, incredible. I mean, right? They've really gotten after after Daniel Richardson. They've stopped the run well. You know, I, I think you go into halftime and say, hey, look, you know, we, we've taken you know some some good shots here by Central Michigan. We've held our own. We're only down nine points here. There's a there are a lot of a lot of positives. Now, remember, Ference had muffed the snap the last time. Well, it was off the turf. It was a bad snap. And they had to bat it out of the back of the end zone for a safety. Now, fourth and four from their own 45-yard line. Eric Abril is the long snapper. Gets it out cleanly this time. Good kick. Very good kick. Fair catch called and made at the 12-yard line. So that's going to take us to the end of the half. Two seconds left. 9-0 Central Michigan. They got seven points on the touchdown throw from Daniel Richardson to Dallas Dixon. In, 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 in at halftime here, Central Michigan has got to find a way to get Daniel Richardson comfortable. It, it's They're kind of trying to let him be that in-the-pocket passer, but at 5'10", that's not really where he's having success. You're seeing that batted ball is down, a lot of pressure in his face. I think you got to get him outside the pocket a little bit. And, Give him that cleaner picture. Yeah, you're totally right. I mean, he was just throwing it right into the guys, and you know, you got to move around, you know. So we'll see if they make some adjustments here, but it's a 9 0 lead for Central Michigan, and they will get the second half kickoff as well. So a chance to really tack on some more when the second half starts. But that's the end of one here tonight on this Wednesday from DeKalb, Illinois. Second week of the season for teams in the MAC, and it's 9 zip. Central Michigan at the half. Back with halftime after this. Back in Illinois on this Wednesday night. Happy Veterans Day, everyone. It's a 9-0 Central Michigan lead over Northern Illinois. As we welcome you back to Husky Stadium. Mike Corey and Rocky Boyman. Good to have you with us here tonight. It uh, could be more for Central Michigan. They got a touchdown and a safety. What happened in that first half? Yeah, I, I just think Central Michigan is looking this like saying, we could be up three or more scores right now, if not for some missed opportunities out there. And, and especially you, you look at and the ball inside the five yard line here, getting ready to go up. And then I, I think a bad play call there. I think instead you try to run that ball in. And then this is what they're going to get the ball back after an interception with about two minutes left to go. But it's negated by a roughing the passer penalty here, so some missed opportunities for Central Michigan. But you got to give Northern Illinois credit, especially how they have stopped the run tonight. Just allowed 41 rush yards. This defense, young defense, Mike, really getting after it. Interested to see can they keep this up, or does Central Michigan's offensive line, big, powerful offensive line, they start to wear this defense down as this game continues to go? Yeah, that's 41 yards rushing on 20 attempts for Central Michigan, so 2.1 average there. And only 19 rushing yards, though, however, for Northern Illinois as well. So neither team uh, setting the world afire on the ground. And let's take a look at some of the first half stats here as well. And the third down conversions, boy, 0 for 7 for Central Michigan, 1 for 9. Yeah, either team not doing good. Or you can say defensively, they're doing, doing well each team. But what to me, it, 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 this half is going to be defined by how can Central Michigan get their quarterback, Daniel Richardson, comfortable? You know, he's facing a lot of pressure, he has some balls batted down. 
Yeah, so let's go back to this kickoff here, though, for a second, right? He called for the fair catch here. This is Colby Lewis, but you pick it up off the ground like that, and you know you don't you don't get the uh, no, you, you, know, you know you get it right where you, you get right where you catch. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. You got to catch it on the fly right. uh, to get that at the 25 yard line. So that's that's a mistake right there. They're gonna have the ball at the six yard line to get things started for the second half. Not the way you wanted it to go here. And as we talked about the rush defense, and uh, it's right there <laughs> right yet back. again. And pushing Lewis all the way back to the back of his own end zone. Going to be a gain of a couple of yards up close to the 10 and, yard line, and, the and, forward and progress. And look, we, we talked about first half miscues. Well, then now Central Michigan first play the kickoff of the second half. They have, you know, they don't do well fielding the kickoff. So now they're back inside their own 10 yard line. Then Northern Illinois defense stuffs them. That's one thing you have to be, you have to recognize. If you're going to run up a call for the fair catch, you better go up there and make the, make catch. the catch. I mean, now you don't, you might not know where yeah. the ball's going to go, but I mean, you know, off the turf like that, and you pick that's it up, and that's where bad. it's going to be. Here's a nice run, nice spin move by Lewis, and a first down up across the 25 yard line. That's a big gainer right there, and you haven't seen many of those tonight. Best run of the night. And there you see just a nice job blocking there. Tackle Derek Smith kicking his defensive end out. Nice wide open hole there for Kobe Lewis. Spins out of the pocket there. Richardson on the catch. Now it's Dallas Dixon who has the lone score in this game. A 58 yard touchdown way back in the first series of the game for Central Michigan. There's the center, Jim. Jamez Kimbrough, starter in 2018, but he set out last year with an injury. Nice job there in that last sequence. So they get that block in off to the right side, along with his teammate Danny Matowski, the right guard. The Spring Lewis, that big run. All, right. All packed in there. And this time it's Lou Nichols, the third, who's the one of the H back, Richard Freshman. He had some good runs in that first half for a little bit there. They had him four straight plays one series where they picked up a fourth yeah. down conversion. Yeah, he's kind of their power back. He's 220 pounds. Back to Nichols again, stretching it on the outside. Good run inside the 40 down the sideline. Another big gainer. So after being stalled in the first half, there is a flag down, however, back at the 35-yard line. Offense number 44, 10-yard penalty, first down. Wow, so you know, right where you said at the half, Rocky, <laughs> about miscues, and it continues here, because that's just going to stop another big play. I think he, you see at the top, he just tosses his guy. I mean, he didn't have to do it. He had him kicked out. There was no need to, to do that. Extra WWE toss right there. It's just, again, just mental things. I'm sure right now Jim McElwain is just saying, God, guys, we're shooting ourselves on the foot. We can play clean football here. We'll give ourselves a chance. Yeah, and that's one of their best blockers, too, there in Hunter Butchkowski, who's banged up a little bit, senior tight end. That's going to push them back to their own 30 yard line instead of being out at the 35 or so of Northern Illinois, and that's not going to go far on that play. And again, Nichols. Can make it Lewis. And yeah, there's an rain or two freshmen. As we talked about, a lot of freshmen on this NIU roster, especially on defense. What do you want here now? A second down and 19. I mean, how do you try to keep this drive alive? They you know, kick the ball on the outside. I think yeah, they're soloing down the bottom of the screen. Pimpleton's heading down in that direction as well. Richardson finds him on the catch. And that's going to get some of that penalty yardage back and more. Khalil Pimpleton. How about the amount of true freshmen that true are on this freshmen. roster for Northern <laughs> Illinois? <laughs> That's, right? And, and this is part of the of the rebuild that Thomas Hammock was talking about. You know, some coaches go the direction of JUCO players and transfers, and he said, I, I want to go with you know, the, the freshmen. I want to know these kids out of high school and really build this thing for the long haul. Big third down here for Central Michigan. Richardson on the pass out to Pendleton. He has it. Makes a move and has the first inside Northern Illinois territory. That is a big time pickup 
after a penalty that pushed them back deep, and now they've got the chains moving. Yeah, not nice pocket there for Richardson, and then I, I thought Pimpleton was going to make a mistake there and try to reverse field and not get enough yards for the first down, but he's, he's a savvy veteran. He's been doing it a long time. Nice player. That is the first third down conversion wow, for okay. Central Michigan tonight. And look at this. On the move, here we go. Inside the 20-yard line at 10, finally dragged down Darius Bracey. Almost had a touchdown. And it's going to be first and goal for Central Michigan. And Bracey just does a good job just, just hitting this thing downhill. And look at the blocking. Nice little cut there, and then look, man, it just opens up like the Red Sea. And they've implemented this Wildcat very, very effectively. Last week they did the same thing. And nice job by Bracey hitting that thing downhill. Third time tonight in the Wildcat there for him. You're right. It was effective that time. Sending up a first and goal at the six yard line. Lewis, the carry. Nothing happening there. Good job by DeMond Taylor and Griffin there as well. Jeffrey Griffin. All right, so Lewis out, Rocky, and Bracey back in. And we see Wildcat here yet again. I think we will. Yep. Yep. Second and goal. Bracey, ball is off the turf, he picks it up, and he's going to be hit from behind, and he'll gain maybe a yard, as that was Rayshon Thomas that got him. Now it's just inside the five-yard line, third and goal. Yeah, and I think Bracey's hurt here on this play. He's holding an ankle. It started with a bad snap, and downhill from there. Time on the field. Darius Bracey, and he's up. It's a good sign. We'll update you on his progress when we come back. Darius Bracey getting attention from the medical staff after that last run. He got tripped up on his ankles there. Rayshon Thomas on the tackle. Yeah, just, just a little bit rolled up on the left ankle, but it looks like it's going to be Kobe Lewis, Wildcat quarterback. Third and goal, Central Michigan. Pimpleton in motion. Lewis a direct snap up the middle, and he's going to be shy of Pater down at the one-yard line. That was the 11th play of the drive for a total now of 94 yards. This drive started all the way back at the own five-yard line. And now Lewis and company with fourth and goal from the one yard line, Rock. Well, last time they tried passing the ball. This time it's going to be a run. It, look, this is Wildcat Kobe Lewis at quarterback. Fourth and goal. Kobe Lewis. Lewis, and he's in. Touchdown, Central Michigan. Yeah, Mike, they decide not to mess around this time with the getting cute and rolling the quarterback out. We're just going to hike it to our running back, get that offensive line going, and move some bodies, and punch it in for the touchdown. Huge touchdown there for Central Michigan. How about two great blocks on that right side by Hunter Bachkowski yeah. and Oakley Lovalli, the two tight ends of their 44 48. Yeah, and Mike again. We go through bread and butter, Kobe Lewis, some nice blocking up front, Wachkowski punches it in. Central Michigan up 16 to nothing. ESPN College Football is brought to you by Geico. You could save even more by bundling home and car insurance. Thank you to all of our veterans here on Veterans Day today around the nation and on this Wednesday night we 
welcome you back to Maction from Illinois. How about that last drive here, Rocky? <laughs> 94 yards, and that was an attitude drive, Mike. A lot of runs, a lot of wildcat, a lot of, hey, we're going to just take it to you and impose our will uh, upon that defense. You know, and a couple key passes there by Richardson, but it was mostly done on the ground. It was nine run plays out of those 12 for the opening drive for the touchdown to start this second half. Now Northern Illinois and a little bit of a hole. They fumble on the kickoff return, and it is recovered by Willie Reed of Central Michigan. Was he in bounds? Yes, he was. And it's going to be Chippewa's football. But I'm not sure he had possession. I'm interested to see this replay. See if he got possession of it. it Trayvon Rudolph had fumbled the kickoff return. Yeah, there goes the ball. Okay, right here. Does he gain possession? Is that totally? Uh, Ball looks like it's squirting out there. Now the call on the field was a recovered fumble. Let's see if this, this angle is better. These are always so tough, right? I mean, it, he it, pounces it, on it there, but does he have control of the ball? It, it is a tough one, but you know, is there indisputable video evidence to overturn it? I don't, I don't think so. That, that's. You don't want the game being called from the, the replay booth. You want, you know, just when it's a clear miss of a call, and you could say, boy, it looked like it squirted out, but I don't know. I just don't know if there's enough indisputable video evidence to overturn this. Well, it would be Reed's second fumble recovery of the season. So here's Trayvon Rudolph as he fumbles, almost had it back himself, and then. Cause, I mean, because his, his hand is underneath, he cups it as it's going out, but then does it squirt out a little bit at the end? His body's in the way. And that's how important the call on the field is. Correct. You know, that's why it's always so important what the call on the field is, right. because like you said, if you don't have enough evidence to overturn it, the call on the field stands, and the call on the field is a fumble recovery by Willie Reed for Central Michigan. So if it does stand, they'll have the ball at the Northern Illinois 28-yard line and can really put the hurt on here to start the second half. In, in my opinion, there's not enough indisputable video evidence to overturn that call. Mm -hmm. Now, all things being equal, had it gone the other way, I don't, I don't know if there's Correct. An indisputable video evidence to overturn that. Right. All right, so had they not said it was a fumble recovery, I agree with you, it'd probably have to stand yeah. that way. Yeah. Let's see what they do here. But. I mean, it happens so fast, too. And his left arm comes and cups that ball, and it looks like it may score it out at the end, but then does it touch the right arm before it bound? You know, and if you're the official over there, here's the call. After review, the ruling of recovery by the kicking team stands first and ten for Central Michigan. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Rocky. I mean, you know, and you're the official. You see him roll over, and then when you finally see him yeah. come up, he's got the ball, so it's hard. That's I, in real time, I, real I'm speed. I'm at the point now where I think if you have to look at a replay more than two times and you don't know, you got to stick with the original call. Yeah. I just think that's that's the way replay should be used. Again, not calling the game from the booth. Only use the booth if there's something that you just blatantly happen to miss. It's there as, as a fallback. Well, I think they got that, you know, right. Yeah. Considering the circumstances, Jerry Bram, our replay official, and Greg Blum, our referee tonight. Nice job there. And it's going to be Central Michigan football as Richardson takes a shot on the sideline. It's incomplete for Pimpleton. You know, and how about what Central Michigan has done to start each half, right? The first half, their drive went for 76 yards and that touchdown to Dixon. And then to start the second half, they go 94 yards and get the touchdown. But for the rest of the game, Rocky, they've only had 58 <laughs> total yards. That's right. And that was interesting. They brought Ty Brock in, quarterback, to throw one pass, and now Richardson comes back in. So now they hand off to Lou Nichols, and he gets inside the 25-yard line down to the 23. Yeah, that's the uh, first action of Brock. Now you talked about number 12 in QB. I mean, what about Richardson's play. I know you weren't thrilled early on because he had a couple balls batted down. And, you know. I, I think he's been okay. Is he done? I don't think he's done anything exceptional. You know, I think last drive was, was better, but I think they need a little bit more out of that position. Third down. 
Richardson swings it out and Nichols on the catch but it's going to be shy of the first down now it's going to be fourth and they are in field goal range here midway through the third. We'll take the field goal attempt especially after the turnover <laughs> trying to get some points on the board here. And this is interesting because we asked Jim McElwain where, where are you comfortable with your, your freshman uh, kicker he said we, we got to get inside the 10 yard line <laughs> so this is a long field goal. Yeah Marshall Meter is going to say okay let's see if I can knock this one down for There's you. It's going to be a 40 man. yard attempt and the kick is on the way and that is nice that is good so he hits it. Two nice. for two on the season, knocked out a 22 yarder last week, and this 40 yarder. And he says, There you go, coach. 19 <laughs> nothing. Central Michigan over Northern Illinois. Yeah, knock away. You got it. <laughs> Coming up on Saturday. Irish making a push to be in the college football playoff. They get a big game at BC, though. Can't have a letdown after that huge win over Clemson. We'll see what happens. They got Wisconsin and Michigan in desperate need of a win there. That is coming up on Saturday. Don't miss those games on ABC and the ESPN app. Who would have thought Michigan would be one and two yeah. to start the season? Wow. Very surprising. And this time we'll take a knee after the fumble on the kickoff return the last time. You know what I like about Coach McElwain here and what he's doing is that you know let's think about this for Central Michigan right they got one color helmet they got a maroon jersey they got a gold jersey who's then out here spending money on <laughs> you mean jerseys. They don't have a chrome, like, uh, yeah right. Uh, you know, helmets. Yeah, yeah I think they're <laughs> like yeah. most schools. And that's the thing everybody's worried about all that stuff right. He wants yeah. to take care of the players you know he's put money into nutrition you know developing the players they got a brand new champion center yeah. there it's like let's it's, I think that's key. I, I just think that moves players, young recruits, more so than fancy uniforms. I want to go to a place where they've got great facilities, they're investing right. in our nutrition. Uh, I, I'd look that way if I was an 18 year old recruit. Right. I mean, the thought of it is, is are you going to go spend twenty, thirty thousand dollars on uniforms, you know, or are you going to spend it on food and nutrition right. and, well, and, and getting and the guys to learn? Well, look, in this you know age of, you know, living with COVID and we I mean, look around the country. There's sports programs getting canceled, right? Because right. the budgets aren't there. So you got to make that the money that you do have counts. So let's put it in places where we can get the most bang for our book. That's the nutrition. That's the weight room. The development of our players. Best turnaround in the nation from last year. And one win to eight wins. Now Northern Illinois. Trying to do something. And the ball is loose again. Another fumble here. It's two consecutive series. Let's see if they got this one back. Uh, Ty Brock underneath there trying to get this ball back. It's going to be Central Michigan football. It's recovered. And they've got it. Mohamed Diallo. Excuse me, Bowers is on the bottom there trying to get back the quarterback, and Diallo instead recovers it for Central Michigan. And Collins saying, I was down. Well, let's go back to the play. So. Hey, look at it was Diallo that ripped it out, and then Tico Brown's down the middle of that part, and then the ball pops out. <laughs> Diallo says, Oh, it's right there. Yeah. I'll grab it. Now, what do you think? And, and it didn't look like he was down because he was on top of Diallo. Right. So he wasn't, it, it did not, can't say he was down, you know, or ground caused a fumble or that he was down. That was a fortunate play right there by Diallo. Wow. That was great. Texas A&M transferred. He's able to get it back for his offense. There's just over seven minutes to go. And it's turned very quickly here for Central Michigan. They get an opening drive for a touchdown. The give goes to Lewis. Then they get a fumble on the kickoff return that they turn into three points. And now they get a fumble on the carry from Aaron Collins. Recovered by Mohamed Diallo and they get this ball back. So a chance to really tack on some more here in the third quarter and try to put this thing out of reach. No gain on the first down. Lou Nichols is now in the backfield. He gets the call and he has stood up. 
After a couple yards, pushing the pile to the 25. In, in Northern Illinois is is loading up to stop the run. In, in, that, that's a good move here. We look look at all these bodies in there. So at some point, Daniel Richardson is going to have to complete some passes to just right. keep them from stock, stacking the box here. Third and eight. Richardson with time over the middle. The catch is made at the 19-yard line by Dixon, but it's going to be shy of the first down. And Dallas Dixon on the catch. It is going to be fourth and two. And he's saying, let's go for this here. Fourth and two from the 19-yard line. Richardson's out. It's going to be the Wildcat again. He's giving some extra instructions there to Colby Lewis. Last time Lewis ran in for the touchdown from one yard out on a fourth down in the Wildcat. Now fourth and two. Trying to get the first down and keep this going. And the initial spot looks a little dicey, but I thought the extra push there, he might have had it, Rocky. Yeah, and, and I didn't hear a whistle until after that, that second push came. So I think this is going to be a first, first down here. I think we might get a measurement. It's going to be close. Well, they needed to get to the 17-yard line, and then from that spot, it's not even close. Yeah. It's more to the 18-yard line, just inside the 18. Let's get a look at it here. He's trying to pile it up in there, and he stopped there, but... Wow, okay, I mean, maybe, yeah. He, he's tackled down at, like, the 16-yard line He was. All that. The, the pile had moved, but, but Lewis was on the ground there. That, that looked like it might have been a good oh, okay, stop. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, from this spot, it's I mean, this is going to be short. Yeah, most oh, definitely. definitely. Yeah, yeah. It's not, yeah. yeah that, that was deceiving because the, the pile moved. It looked like you assumed he was in the pile, but gotcha. Kobe Lewis had yep. gone down before that. That was a great job by NIU. Their, their run defense. Wow, I mean, that's two fourth down stops, right. if you will, by Northern Illinois tonight. I mean, you would think, you know, had their offense been able to get something going, had they not turned it over, I mean, it wouldn't be 19 nothing ball game here because that's pretty good to get two fourth down stops. Now, I still think this is a critical time right now for NIU's offense. Ross Bowers has got to get something going offensively. You know, it's 19 to nothing. This game is not out of reach here, but you know, you don't have any success on this drive. You get the give the ball back to Central Michigan with good field position. Mm. I think they're going to take another look at this. Greg Blum is heading all the way down the other end of the field to talk to replay. But I'm with you, Rocky. Yeah, it looked like you know Lewis was, was in that pile. He was not. So let's go take a look at that again. I just thought from the initial spot he might have gotten a little bit more. Granted, he wasn't in that pile all the way down at the 16-yard line, but I, I think he got a, a little yeah, bit yeah. better than the 18. So here he is, right? So that, there he is. He, he's down on the ground. Right. And the rest of the pile is up there. I think it's another one of those things, like you said, not enough evidence. Right. You know? Yeah. Spots are always so hard to review, in my opinion. I mean. I love how we say, I was talking to somebody about this, I love how we say, you know, it's a game of inches, it's a game of inches, and, you know, you got guys from the sideline running in and... Stands. <laughs> First and ten for Northern Illinois. Yeah, yeah there you go. Stands. And you got guys just kind of running in and, you know, placing the ball down. It's like, well, <laughs> what do you mean? it's not really it's very important. specific. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. All right, Ross Bowers, let's see what you have here. See if, they can, if you can lead this offense, put together a nice drive. Who would you like to see him get it to? I, I mean, Cole Tucker's been, I mean, there's Cole Tucker right there. And now he's going against Brian Edwards, who's a great man-to-man -man cornerback. I'd also like to see 
the freshman Trayvon Rudolph get involved as well. Powers, he hands it off, and it's Harrison Whaley, and he's taken down by Diallo, who had the <laughs> fumble recovery, and now this stop for a one-yard loss. And it's coming around from the left side, so just knifing in. And at some point, they got to block Diallo, and they got to block Harrison on the outside. Central Michigan front four really doing a nice job tonight. With a bunch formation of the wide receivers here now in a second down play. Whaley again. And that's going to net about three yards. And after the loss of one to start, it'll set up third and eight. Now, I, I, I want to go back to what I said earlier, Mike. I, you know, sometimes, you know, often you, you got, okay, you're, you got to run the ball, run the ball to be able to pass. I think it's the reverse. I think this Northern Illinois team has got to pass the ball to open the run up. They yeah. keep trying to run, and it's, it's not really there tonight. I agree with you. Got to stretch the field a little bit, stretch this defense out. Third and eight. Now you got a pass from their own 20 yard line. Bowers. Quickly, and the catch is made. It's Cole Tucker. He has it. It gets up to the 45 and a first down for Northern Illinois. And that's the guy that you mentioned. Yeah, he, he's kind of been the go to guy. There's a nice bang, bang play. A little stutter step, plant the outside foot, and an easy, high percentage throw for Bowers. And that time working against Richard Bowens, and there's an injured player now. That's Willie Reed. Now, we, Reed was the one that had that fumble recovery on that kickoff return. They're attending to him. Yeah, they've, they've wanted Tucker like all night. Yeah. When, they, when they've gone to the air, you know, here's a look at what happened to Reed. Looks like he was, they were working on his left shoulder. Tucker, nice target, six foot two. About 200 pounds. Third catch for 47 yards for Tucker tonight. Yeah, I mean, I'm totally with you about the style that you have to show on offense now because Northern Illinois has 23 rushing yards tonight. Okay, 23 yeah. in 22 attempts. Yeah. Let's just see. Stretch that field out. Try to create some balance. Go to the pass, then maybe come back with a run once you start having success. Bowers pump fakes. Pressure comes in, and he has to get rid of it. And, and here's the other thing, too, Mike. You look out Central Michigan, and it's what they do. They play a lot of man-to-man, -man as they are tonight here. I, I start to try to get some, some crossing routes, some picks, something, something like that to find a way to get your wide receivers open because right now they've you know, not been able to have much success. So you got to scheme wise, find ways to get those guys open. Makes sense. You're, you're put, wondering. Yeah, that. put them in motion a little bit. Yeah, help them out off the line. Mowers is passed dangerous there on the cross and it's incomplete. Again, Tucker, the intended target and that time it was Deshaun McNary, the cornerback who was on coverage. Third and ten. Well, I think to your point, I mean, it, it's going to be hard to win just some one-on-one -on -one matchups against those pretty good corners. Right. I mean, they got a couple of corners there, and Edwards, the zero, transfer out of Florida, and then Bowens, transfer out of Iowa State, right. number but, seven. But you put them in motion, and you give them a, a better chance off the line of scrimmage, you get some crossing routes, maybe try to get some natural picks going, and see what they draw up here on third and ten. There we go. Some motion. That's Tucker. And the catch is made from Crawford. And it's going to be well shy of the first down. I mean, that's Daniel Crawford, tight end. Yeah, that's a good play call if it's, you know, if it's third and five. Yeah. But it's, you know, it's third and ten. I mean, got to go for it here, right? Fourth and eight. I think so. Time's ticking away. Yeah. How many chances he's going to have? And, you know, it's already a three-score ball game. This is the most critical play of the game right here for Northern Illinois. 
Fourth down. Bowers, catches made. Tucker, he's got to get though to the 46 of Central Michigan. Not going to get there. Going to be a couple yards shy. Gage Kresge on the tackle. This, this defense just swarms. I mean, just. And then here comes the cavalry. Gage Kresge comes up, makes the, gets the initial hit, and then lots of the white jerseys joining him. And there's another injury down as well. I believe that's Troy Brown, number eight. Mm. Injury timeout from Illinois. Troy Brown off the field and now being looked at, but we also have a booth initiated review for targeting on Troy Brown who comes in and makes this hit and is, you know, if you're leading with the crowd on the helmet, it doesn't matter whether it's a defenseless player or not, you can never do right. that. So, and this is why the rules in place, I mean, you know, he was the one that was injured and he was the defensive player, you right. know, there's, coming there's over. There's two to, potential parts yeah. in this foul, but you'll see as he comes in there, looks like he hits with the, the top of the helmet, the crown of the helmet. And he goes down immediately. Yeah. And that's that's eight. Troy Brown. And, and this is why they put this part of the rule in because they don't want the, the the defensive players. It's not just about protecting the offensive players. It's protecting the defensive players against themselves. Right. So you're not leading with that crown of that helmet. Here's Greg Blum. The result of the play is that the runner was short of the line to gain. His forward progress stopped the play. Following the play, personal foul, targeting. Number eight of Central Michigan. 15 yard penalty and number eight is disqualified from further competition. First and 10 for Central Michigan. And, and that's, you know, being the second half, that's going to put him out of the first half of the game next week as well. And He's, that's one of their best players. Yeah, he, he is. He's their best linebacker. But I, I, I thought Northern Illinois did a poor job right there of helping their wide receivers out. At some point, you got to get some scheme going, get your guys open, and I have not seen that all game. You know, there's route combinations, there's things you can do to help get your wide receivers open. I, I've just not seen it all night. Well, and so Troy Brown is done for the rest of the day, and uh, also, like you said, the first half of next week as he's over in that concussion protocol right now, getting looked at. That's unfortunate. Now Central Michigan back on offense here. And this catch is made. Nice grab hauled in by Tyrone Scott. And just about a yard and a half shot of the first down. It was a spectacular wow. catch. <laughs> Tap that toe down. It's unbelievable. He's an exceptional athlete. Very productive last year. I'd like to see him become more productive here this year. Richardson, they dump it off on the screen. Nichols blocking in front. Nichols down the sideline. One guy to beat. Lou Nichols not touched, and it's a touchdown. Fifty-eight yards on the strike from Daniel Richardson. Beautifully set up on the screen, and Lou Nichols gets the six. You can watch him get the offensive lineman out in front here. I'm gonna get, I think it's Matowski. Seeing, boom, kicking the corner back out, and then it's Kobe Lewis showing the speed down the sideline. Now, now that was a good play call there. You get a little misdirection, and then the screen, and then Lou, yeah, excuse me, yeah, it was Lou Nichols on the run. Yeah, and that's the kind of stuff that you were talking about, right? I mean, there's got to be something a little bit different that you got to do there with Richardson. Right. I mean, you set you got to nice keep the defense play. on their heels. You got to show them some things that, okay, there, you get the pump action to the left, and now we're going to bring it back across to the right. All right, now, look at that block there. Love that. 
And then Nichols down the sideline. He pops just enough air over the top of the uh, defender, right, to get that dropped right in there. Yeah, and, Nichols. and why that was a good play call, too, is I think Northern Illinois defensively is doing a good job. They're stopping the run. They're getting aggressive. They're flying around. So you see a defense that's flying around, flowing really fast. Okay, let's let's use that aggressiveness against them. Let's go pump one way and we'll bring a screen back to the other side. That's a great play call there. That, that's what that's what Northern Illinois needs, right? Some innovation offensively, and they, they have not shown that. And so the Chippewas, after just a 9-0 halftime lead, they probably felt like it could have been more. Well, they get into more now. It's 26-0 with a minute 52 to play in the third. And, and Lou Nichols is kind of the, the big 220-pound power back. He's shown the speed in the outside yeah. as well. Good job. Well, on the return here is Trayvon Rudolph for Northern Illinois. And they'll have it, but down 26 zip. Our next UFC fight night, Saturday in Las Vegas, only on ESPN Plus. Paul Felder takes on Rafael Dos Anjos, moving down in weight for the lightweight main event. Prelims start at 4 Eastern, main card at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. To get ESPN Plus, go to ESPNplus.com. Download the ESPN app. So what can Thomas Hammock do to help his offense, can help his quarterback out here? First down, Bowers, deep shot, it's incomplete. Sliding attempt by Trayvon Rudolph. Man, you can just see Bowers is a little frustrated tonight. You know? Yeah, I mean, well, you know, there's been good man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. I get that, but there, there's some scheme things you can do to, to to help him out, and I just don't think they've they've helped set him up for success tonight. What about their top target from last week and Tyrese Ritchie, number three? See if they're trying to get him a little bit more involved. Bowers facing pressure now. Flag is down. He rolls out. And this pass is incomplete. And we'll check the call. Is that time wanted Rudolph? Holding. Offense number 58. 10 yard penalty. Second down. Yeah, Brandon Patton, the center. Patton is beaten. Yeah. Yeah, there's a right on. And that's going to call it every time. Clear grab of the jersey. Yep. Well, and, and Diallo's had a huge night. So that's right. It's the only way you might be able to stop that. <laughs> Wait, stop him and Harrison. Yeah. Second and 20 from their own 15. Pressed up on the outsides. Now a shot and overthrown incomplete. Shrieking down there was Dennis Robinson. Looked like he might have had a step though on a couple of those. Defenders. Yeah, I mean, a, a perfect throw. He, yeah. he had him open there, but it, it would have taken a, a, a dime throw. Bowers couldn't come up with it. What's been tough is that, like you said, their run game has given them nothing. So yeah. even if you try to go, you go, you're always, you feel like you're always going to be in a, a long situation, right? right? right. Like a third and long. It's happened to me. Look at two for 11 on third down. One for 11 for Central Michigan, but they're up 26 zip. Bowers checks it down. There's Richie, but. Be a lot of ground to make up after this catch. Gets up to the 26, and that's it. It's going to be fourth and nine. And the Bonnie Reed. They got to punt this ball away. Among others with a tackle. Ference is on. And 
And this will come right to a rest at the X at the 35 yard line. And with just 35 seconds to go in this third quarter, Central Michigan leading the charge here tonight. This season, for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities, Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. Windy cold night here tonight in DeKalb, Illinois, on this Wednesday for Maction from Husky Stadium alongside former Notre Dame and Super Bowl champion linebacker Rocky Boyman, Mike Corey. 35 ticks to go in the third. Fun cold night here in DeKalb. Yeah. Wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah. Take what, right now, Northern Illinois' defense, I think right now, has got to get aggressive. they got to find a way to get a turnover, get some momentum back, and get another possession for their offense. Speed sweep here. On the run, Khalil Pimpleton, and he is finally taken out of bounds at the 40-yard line. 25-yard pickup there on first down. See the speed by Pimpleton. Even blocking on the outside. I, was, I think that was LaValle, yep. A few more playmakers for Central Michigan, right, to be able to do this kind of stuff is yeah. why you maybe don't see that on the other side. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, look, it's more of a veteran group that Central Michigan has, of course. And, you know, Khalil Pimpleton, a junior. Corey Sullivan's a senior. 26 nothing. Central Michigan after three. Back with the fourth quarter after this. All chips tonight, 26 nothing as we welcome you to the start of the fourth quarter here. As Central Michigan has it, and they go to Kobe Lewis on this first down play to start the fourth. Mike Corey, Rocky Boyman with you. As this is the 56th meeting all time between these two teams. Central Michigan won last year 48 to 10. They've won five of the last six. And uh, on their way, possibly another one here. They keep this up. Wildcat with Lou Nichols. Now the last touchdown, a 58-yard screen pass and run for the TD. Now he just goes right up the gut and still going, and he's going to have another touchdown. Lou Nichols for Central Michigan. Look, you know it's coming. The, the, the box is stacked. They got everybody up about seven yards from line of scrimmage. Man on man, in the hole. Jordan Hansen, the freshman safety. He's saying, Coach, that's a 220-pound running back coming downhill at me. To see Nichols, I kind of put his head down to potentially take contact and say, okay, let's see what I can get after this. So they just kept going. He just kept going. They yeah. got the touchdown. An extra point from Marshall Meter is good. Yeah, this is just man on man in the hole. Lewis Nichols wins that battle. Central Michigan up big 33 nothing here in DeKalb. All right, our first top 25 college football playoff rankings come out November 24th, and this is how many weeks that the conferences will have played and uh, you know as we know I mean this is just a, a wild year and I mean, what are you look looking at, at there I okay. mean Conference USA American yeah. Conference 12 weeks they're going to play you know you see the Pac-12 three I mean it's impressive I mean, considering right yeah they're going to have you know, American Conference especially you are talking about UC here in a second they're going to have a real chance because there's a potential they can play 11, 12 games in this season where a Big Ten or Pac-12 team may only get six, seven, eight games. There you see Cincinnati right there, number seven. They feel disrespected by number seven, by the way, after a big win, three big wins in a row against SMU, Memphis, and Houston. Foul play, personal foul, late hit. Kicking team number 49, 15 yards from the end of the run, first down. 
Well, and now you're from Cincinnati. You do a radio show every day. Every day you guys are talking all about this, right? Since he's undefeated, um, you know, Luke Fickle's done an awesome job there. They've done a ton of their games over the years, yeah. and they're up in the rankings. So where are you at with all this, right? They they look really, really good. And I'll, and I'll be on the call for that game against East uh, East Carolina here on Friday night. And, uh, yeah, they're, they really, really look good. All three phases. I mean, they just they run the ball. Des Ritter does a good job running the ball. And their defense is, and there you see right there, best chance there in the New York. Here's six bid. I, I, I just think, again, if, if they go play all their games, go undefeated, they're sitting there 11 0, 12 0. What, what happens if you have a. You know, a, a six-win, uh, you know, Big Ten team. And are you really going to put them over uh, over a, a 12, 11, 12 win Cincinnati team? I don't know. Alonzo McCoy is down for Central Michigan. They attend to him. We're gonna, of course, he's up, but we'll be right back after this. ESPN College Football is brought to you by GEICO. You could save even more by bundling home and car insurance. On this Veterans Day, we thank all the men and women who continue to serve our country, and of course, all those who have already served as well, like Northern Illinois fullback Greg DeLuca. How about this guy? He played football <laughs> and lacrosse at Duke. Yes, yeah, amazing. He won a pair of NCAA lacrosse championships back in 2010 and 2013 before becoming a Navy <laughs> SEAL. And then following his service, he walked on to the football team here at Northern Illinois as a graduate transfer. So what else is this guy? I mean, right? just never satisfied, right? Yeah. I mean, playing football, playing lacrosse, winning national titles. I think I'll go serve the country as a Navy SEAL on SEAL Team 10. And then comes, I, I, I want to get my graduate degree, but, but I still have this itch to play football. I'm going to come yeah. back to Northern Illinois. I'm going to walk on and play football. It's unbelievable just that's what life's all about just living it to its fullest false start offense number 65 five-year penalty second down and how about deluca carrying the flag out and bringing the team onto the field here tonight <laughs> DeKalb. i think it was Illinois. a pretty easy uh, conversation of who, who's going to carry the flag yeah. out today uh, yeah <laughs> it's going to be the former navy seal the veteran and lead the team out. He's married, his wife Bailey, and they also have a son, James. So uh, he's just accomplished so much already in his uh, young life. 28 year old Greg DeLuca. Congratulations to you, my friend, and thank you for your service as well. Very cool story. Third down and 17 for Northern Illinois. At the run 33 yard line here tonight. We've got a new quarterback yes, in Rodney do. Thompson. He, he's kind of more of a running style quarterback. Sophomore out of San Diego, California. Well, that's harder than third and 17 to run. Keeper Thompson, sideline. He'll be shy to first down. Good effort though. Now the flag comes in late. Mm. Following the play, personal foul, late hit. Defense number 17, 15 yard penalty, automatic. First down. Well, that's how you get the first, I guess. And yeah. Which McElwain not thrilled with that, obviously, but that's on Douglas, George Douglas. And, you know, these are, he's one of the better players, too. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, that's just, and I know it's tough because he's a running quarterback. He's, you know, he's not trying to go out of bounds, but they're going to give the quarterback the benefit of the doubt here. But let me just say this. I, I think this is the right call to try out Rodney, uh, Rodney Thompson at quarterback. They, they need more out of that position. They're just not getting it and where they are offensively. I think maybe having a, a quarterback with some running ability will help open up this offense a bit. Well, and this time they're all over it, and Central Michigan able to smell it out. And Hairston and Reed on the tackles. And also Justin Whiteside. Hairston is a one-man wrecking crew out there. Yeah. 
He's put together two consecutive nice ball games. And you said it, Thompson is more of a runner. It's going to give you a little bit more of a change up here. He's a transfer out of Northern Arizona. Uh, they've had, they've run yeah, with three different quarterbacks. Yeah, I mean, there's season. just nothing threatening about their offense right now. So maybe you bring in a guy and try him out and see if maybe add the, the element of, of a running quarterback. Maybe that can help open some things up. And he does it again. And this time he's going to be taken down by Gage Kresge. Well, we showed the graphic earlier about how many young players that this Northern Illinois team has. And again, it is week two, if you will, for them this season. So and now he's kind of limping a little bit after that last play. Yeah, that's jeez. Yeah, I think he's going to try to give it a go. He's not going to be able to. So they're going to bring Bowers back into the game. And Thomas Hammond's got to be seeing. Yeah. Try out Thompson hit a couple of nice runs in there and now he's hurt. Bowers gets it out here for Tyrese Ritchie. And take it down just inside the 35 yard line. And this hasn't been uh, the game I'm sure that Bowers has looked forward to playing because last year you know he was injured leading up to this game. He only practiced on Friday the day before the game. He, Entered on the third drive and he ended up throwing three interceptions and they lost 48 to 10. Yeah. And then, you know, here tonight, certainly been a struggle as well. And they've had, they had some opportunities. Remember, this was a nine to nothing game in the first, you know, beginning of the third quarter. And just uh, not able to capitalize at all tonight offensively. Fourth down, over three on fourth tonight. They need the 28. Bowers and the catch is made. It's going to be a first down pickup. This job there by Richie again. Makes the grab, taken down by Bowens and Hairston, but not before he picks up enough for the first on a fourth down play. Catch is made at the three yard line, and that's the nice grab there by Fabian McCray. And a flag is down as well, and that's back at the 25 yard line. We'll see what the flag is, but that's the best two consecutive throws of the night for Bowers. Holding and offense number 76, penalty. 10 yard penalty, first down. Well, if that doesn't tell you enough about what's happened offensively, yeah, there's John Champ. Freshman lineman, yeah, just I don't know if there was enough there to call a no, penalty or not. I was going to say the word uh, rhythm because it's like yeah. I feel like the only time that they yeah. even had something kind of going, but then it gets stalled by that. So. Yeah. And look, that, that's what you're going to get with the young team, you, you know. But that's you, you got to find a way to limit those things. If you're building your roster up, there's just less and less room for error or penalties just mental mistakes can't happen there's some 20 hours look out hit as he throws and has to get rid of it incomplete let me give you a guess who was the number on the pressure here <laughs> Harrison that's <Once> again <laughs> I mean one three look at this just I, I, I'm going to make this comparison, and not not to the extent, but I, I played two years with Dwight Franey, right? And, and he was six one, six two, in the, in the age of you know Julius Peppers, and you know mm -hmm. six four, six five, on these long, tall defensive ends. But I always thought Franey's height, not being a tall guy, helped him with his leverage and yeah. his balance, his center of gravity. And I think the same thing is going on here with Harrison. He just gets underneath your pads as an offensive lineman. He's quick. He's explosive. A really good player. 5'11, 245. Talking about number 13 for Central Michigan. There he is. And uh, a senior out of Birmingham, Michigan. What, what about the prospects of this guy at the next level? Yeah, I mean, look, his height is going to hurt him at, at the next level. But look, I mean, you know, you, you make plays out there. The next level, they see it and they say maybe, maybe he gets a shot. Maybe, you know, is he going to be a high draft pick? That might be tough, but. 
Yeah. Get on get on the field, get on the roster, you never know what happens. If you're productive there, you're gonna turn some eyeballs and they're gonna at least give you a shot. Third and 20. Powers' his pass is caught underneath. And a short grab there by Daniel Crawford. Be fourth down. Well, that's the thing. You just gave a great example there of, you know, one of the best really at that position. Yeah. A fun player, I'm sure, to play with as well, too. And I hate when always the measurements, you know, prohibit people from yeah. potentially becoming, you know, who they could be. It, it, it does. It, it, it really does. It's it, it should be about your game tape. And I think largely for the most part it is. But, you know, it, it's a lot of times it's just the, the NFL is such a physically elite league that, you know, I, I think GMs look at it and say, boy, we're just going to give us the, the best chance of, 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 of potential on a guy. And if you can run, you can jump, you're tall, you're good size, that's, that's always going to give you a step ahead. Hey, 45 yard field goal counted for John Richardson. And Northern Illinois is on the board here in this fourth quarter. All right, Notre Dame back in action this Saturday, 7 and 0, number two in the country at. Five and three, Boston College played well. Then again, number 13, Wisconsin and Michigan. A surprising one into the season. How about the job Notre Dame did stopping Travis Etienne? Yeah. In that Clemson game. You know, you knew they were going to leave on lean on Etienne with Trevor Lawrence being out. I mean, Notre Dame was holding their opponents to 85 yards rushing right now. That's a heck of a job. Lewis on the return for Central Michigan up across the 30 yard line. And the flag comes flying in here late. Following the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, receiving team number 82. 15 yard penalty, first down. Well, these are the things that will be talked about this week that you know, are pretty much unnecessary if you're Central Michigan, the way they're playing tonight. But up 33 to 3. Receiving team. Kicking team. 15 oh, yard okay. penalty. First down. All right now I'm thoroughly confused. Yeah, it, kicking team. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry, coach. I was like, I didn't see an 82 <laughs> on Central Michigan. And I'm like, well, he said it was on Central Michigan, so. Yeah. Right, apologies. They will be talking about that. They'll <laughs> say, keep doing what you're doing. 33 to 3. And they're going to get the ball to run 47 yard line. Hey, back to your Notre Dame guys for a second here. I mean, you got Boston College five and three. You have North Carolina five and two. Yeah. Syracuse at home. I mean, they probably should get that. They're one and seven, and then at Wake Forest is four and two. Now a potential rematch. Yeah, it's even look, the it's, ACC this it's, year. It's, it's not a cakewalk uh, yeah. all the way, but they keep playing the way they are. I, I think we're going to see that Clemson Notre Dame rematch. Right. What about Notre Dame's uh, chances for the playoff? Forty six point two. I mean, obviously a huge win last week, but then, yeah, you know, it, it, it's so tough to go undefeated in college. I mean, you're dealing with college kids, right? They yeah. got, they do college things. Their minds are on, you know, <laughs> so, so many things that out there, especially this year, you know, find a way to, to limit the distractions. I give these coaches, coaching this year, a lot of credit. Okay, so the swing play here to Jahir Swan. Who is a freshman running back out of Newark, New Jersey? Super fast. And you can see that there on that play. Picks up a first down. Bad snap, able to pick it up. Hey, what was it like there, you know, when you were when you were at ND and um, what you think maybe goes through some of the minds of the players right now, considering you're a part of that historic university and program? And what they're trying to do now. Yeah, I mean, look, you talking the four like former players looking yeah, back. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's cool, you know, to, to, to look back and, and or to look right now and see them having some success the way they are in, in, a, in a tough season. Back to Nichols. And what about? You know, of course, in this year, being in the ACC. Right. You know, I know there's a ton of talk about that, you know, but. Don't get do me you, started on that. Oh, Notre Dame okay. should join the, 
No, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm no. kidding. But no, no it, it, it had to happen this year, and it was, you know, it, it just had to. You know, rather than you know, Notre Dame try to piece together some season as an independent. I mean, BYU had. I mean, I give BYU a lot of credit for finding a way to get a to get some teams and get a schedule together. But uh, long term, I don't think it's the best move for Notre Dame to be a part of the ACC. I know a lot of folks will disagree with me, but uh, I, I think Notre Dame can play any team in the country, and it's a big game. Anybody they want. Definitely right about that, and they they have been able to play a significant amount of teams that you need to play to put yourself in that position. Right, and so. it's not it's not like they're scheduling you know right. a bunch of gimmies out there. You know, every year, you know, you're going to get great rivalry games like USC. You're going to get right. Notre Dame Stanford. You're going to get you know. I Notre, agree with your point because yeah. you would lose a lot of those. Notre Dame Michigan State's always yeah. a yeah. big historically a big game. So I, I just don't think it's in, in plus with the you know the the. The money that the school receives, I just don't think it's in their best interest. Gotcha. First and goal here, Central Michigan. Familiar situation uh, for them tonight. And they got Ty Brock in at quarterback. He'll keep, he'll get a block, he'll get a touchdown. Ty Brock scores it for the Chippewas as they tack it on here in the fourth. Yeah, Ty Brock showing some running ability there. Yeah, there you go, get to the edge, then cut it up. North South, punch it out. And, and, and look, let me say that this is key in a year with COVID and every every day these coaches are on pins and needles like who, who's going to be ineligible, right? Who's going to be out this week? So the more you can get multiple players some playing time, get them some experience, then you're not caught uh, empty-handed here should something go wrong with a positive test. Well, not much has gone wrong here tonight for Central Michigan. 40 to 3, they lead it here in the fourth. Central Michigan came here today. Here's a look at their schedule. They departed uh, Mount Pleasant at 9 a.m. Took a stop there for lunch and then uh, came to Chicago. You get some meetings, another meal, and then came over here to the stadium. <laughs> that was a long day. Yeah, no, it, it was. But I mean, I, I thought, hey, you want to be as safe as possible. I mean, no need to you know, get over to the hotel and then the buses and this and that. Just Yeah, well, you're, you're kind of staying in your own yeah. team bubble there, right? And they're going to roll Rudolph down. And the ball came out at the end. Let's see. Yeah, it'll be Northern Illinois ball. Time now for the AT&T 5G best moment from tonight's game, Rocky. Yeah, and this was kind of just a dagger here. Nice play design. Get the screen to the outside. And this made it 26 nothing. But again, just, just a nice play call there. Blue nickels on the screen. Central Michigan has done a lot of things well tonight, running the football. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think, it, honestly, if Jim McElwain's looking at this, I think he'd like to have a little more of his quarterback, Daniel Richardson, but but they've uh, done a great job doing what they do best, which is running the football, especially after, look, as you see there, the first half weren't getting it done at all, and the second half they've really poured it on. Dante Kent, Dante Kent uh, getting helped off the field, a true freshman, special teams guy. He's walking off with a little bit of help. First and 10 for Northern Illinois. Trying to get something going for them on the ground, and that's been a struggle tonight. That's the carry by Harrison Whaley. You know, conversely for them, rushing the football tonight is tough. 37 yards before that last run, about 44 now in the night, 45. 28 carries, 45 total yards on the ground. Yeah. And, and, you know, and that's got to really, you know, frustrate Coach Thomas Hammett because that's his thing. I mean, you know, he's the, he's the running back here, former back. You know, he was at the Ravens for five years, running back's coach. And, yeah. you know, I know he's got some young guys, so it's game two. But still, that that's kind of where they want to get some but, of their but, identity. Yeah, I, I still think it's their inability to, to design some passing play concepts that work that could maybe help loosen up some things for that run game. 
he really thought the coming to this game that Harrison Whaley right there was going to have a big night. He just hasn't been much much it can get going in the run game. And they're still developing their offensive line, too. I mean, they've got two graduate uh, players in Ben Olson and Braden Patton, the left guard and the center. But then you got a redshirt freshman at right guard. you got two sophomore tackles. And then I look at all their backups, and it's three true freshmen and two redshirt freshmen. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, let's – you've got to give them some time. That's right. Look, a lot of them are freshmen that are playing without the benefit of a full offseason in spring, but, you know, right. summer camp, all that. Whaley again. I mean, it's just crazy how many freshmen, you know, are on the two deep, you know, 26. I mean, that's <laughs> it's incredible. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a team that won the MAC back in 2018. They went five and seven last year. So, yeah. and here's the thing too, Mike. Just to mention is, you know, that nobody gets dinged a year of eligibility this year, right? So right. these freshmen are going to come back and still, technically, as far as football is concerned, freshmen again. Second out of one, Whaley again, first down. Gonna bring up a point that you just mentioned a moment ago about you know not having a lot of not having a spring ball. You know, I've done a couple of games this year, one with uh, Coastal Carolina, a team that's yeah. playing really well right now. They yeah. actually were able to get their spring. They were the only they team one early. one or Maybe a couple yeah. of teams that was able to get a full yeah because they started early like in February right. or something and and uh, <laughs> it shows you how much that can benefit your team Coastal undefeated this year. Right, playing very well. I mean they're seven and all, fifteenth in the country. And, and Central Michigan, of course, they got ten practices in, so not their their full spring, but still they have. I mean, some teams got none. A lot of right. teams got none. Well and. And as a, here's a carry by Aaron Collins. Uh, back to your discussion, though, that we weren't able to get through because we keep getting flags and injuries. Uh, but Ohio State, you know, you said, hey, what happens if they go 6-0, and you know, and, or 7-0, and are you going to leave out the potential 12-0 Cincinnati? I'm, I'm just right. making a point here. Yeah, right? I mean, well, just, yeah, it's just going to be interesting to see with because already the Big Ten is only going to play an eight-game season, I guess nine if you go to the championship game. But... What happens? You get Ohio State already going to have one game canceled, right? This weekend versus Maryland. What happens if that turns into two, three games? You know, it's it's really going to be interesting to see how that works out between the the amount of games teams play compared to how many games they win. Yeah, and I'd like to look at it in a, in a fashion that we're not going to penalize somebody for not getting what they should have gotten in or whatever, but let's reward the people that actually were able to, I guess, right? Yeah, I mean, I, do you want to say that, or do you want to just go, well, they were, they are the better team, and they would look, have done this? It, but it like, always, to, to me, it comes down to, it's always the, the argument of, is it best team or is the most deserving team, right? And, right. And, and I think the committee looks at it both ways. I just think, I tend to look at most deserving, especially in a year like this. I mean, golly, how do you keep out a team potentially if they go and they win, if they go 11 0 like a UC may do, you just ignore the fact that they've played 11 games? That's, right. I don't know, it's hard to do. Andrew Hayden is in a quarterback and his pass to the end zone is incomplete, almost hauled in by Fabian McCray. And it's going to be fourth down. And that's Hayden. Who's a graduate transfer out of Houston Baptist? I don't know if he, if Hill got a, was able to just kind of swat the arm away at the end there, but I was taking deep ball there by by Hate it. Yeah. Good to get him some reps here, get some game film on him, see how he responds. There we go, fourth in the yard. Fumbled it. Try the sneak, and that's not going to happen. Flag is down. The ball is out as well. Yep, and that's going to be Central Michigan ball. Nowhere close, but there is a flag down. Far side of the field. Another injury. 
And that's Brett Bostad. Defense number 37, the five yard penalty results in the first down. Well, let's take a look at our lineup for this week, right? How about Thursday and Friday? Excited for this. First and second round coverage of the Masters here on ESPN. And then Saturday, second round Notre Dame. We'll talk a lot about that at Boston College. And then we got Terrence Crawford defending his WBO welterweight belt against Kel Brook in Las Vegas. A lot of great stuff coming up. Tail yeah. end of this week. We got you taken care of here at ESPN. Yeah. Right? Good weekend sports. My buddy was asking me, are they going to send me in the Masters? I'm like, nah, I don't know about that. <laughs> I, didn't get the, the I didn't get that in, uh, invite <laughs> in my inbox. I have to recheck yeah, I'll here. I'll work maybe. on that in the future. <laughs> Yeah, we might be waiting for that one for a little while. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, Max scoreboard for you. Look Toledo and Western Michigan. Look yeah. out. Good game there. Look at that. That's a nice win right there by Ball State. But yeah, Toledo and Western Michigan. That one's going to come down. It's over on ESPN. Here, yeah. So we're almost done here. I want to thank our crew here tonight. Damon Lewis, our producer. Director Steve Toll. Sean Meehan. Along with Haley Zedek. And many others. Great work tonight, guys. Thank you. Josh Grimes, Johnny Hart, and audio, and Connor Onion, our spotter slash statistician tonight. 17 seconds left. First down to the end zone, and the catch is made for the touchdown. Dennis Robinson has it for Northern Illinois, and they get a touchdown with just 11 seconds left in the game. Nice ball. I hate it here. Yeah, Dennis Robinson, six foot five wide receiver. And just right at the end, just the acceleration and hauling in for a touchdown. And look at Hammock. Yeah. Yep. At least Northern Illinois, they get on the board here. Something to take away there at the end. An extra point kick, John Richardson. It's good. And hey, wait, no, another flag. Eleven seconds left. There's no foul for leaping. The result of the kick is a successful point after try. Uh, let's take a look at where these teams are headed here, as we are in the middle of November already, if you can believe it. <laughs> and a uh, shortened season. Of course, in the Mac, just the second game here tonight. Uh, here's Northern Illinois' remaining schedule. There we go. I'll, I'll be in Muncie next week uh, for that one there okay. at Ball State. As we said, Western Michigan and Toledo, those two teams are playing right now. Good battle by uh, Eastern Michigan tonight. Uh, fell seven points shy to Ball State. And how about Central Michigan's schedule? As they're going to go to two and out oh yeah. after tonight. Uh, that's going to be a heck of a ball game right there. A the rivalry yeah. game. Yeah. It's, it's, it's still just odd to see right. uh, a six game schedule, you know? Like, I know. That's good. I'm, I'm just so happy that the, the, the Mid American Conference found a way to, to, despite all the odds and despite all the craziness, found a way to at least get a season in. A convincing win here tonight for Central Michigan. And they really turned it on in the second half. What would you say here as we uh, conclude this uh, week two for these uh, teams in this group? In the yeah, I, I'd just say for Central Michigan, they, they came out defense looked like the real deal, right? It did a great job and, and you know, was basically shut this team out until, well, excuse me, uh, held them to a field goal for most of the game. Um, ran the ball well offensively. I, I think they're going to look at the tape and say, boy, how, how do we help help our quarterback out a little more, need a little more out of, out of that position group? And then for Northern Illinois, I, I think in, their, in a lot of ways their defense showed some promise, a young defense, but offensively they got a ton of work to do 
There's just not much creativity going on with their offense right now. Well, Jim McElwain and his staff are going to go to 2-0 and in this season. And 10-6 and so far under his leadership in just a short two years so far, and it's been quite a turnaround, and they want to keep it going. Congratulations to them tonight. 40-10 to as they win it by 30 over Northern Illinois, the final here in their second game of the season. We hope you've enjoyed it. Happy Veterans Day again to all of our veterans out there. Thank you for watching. Final is 40 to 10 Central Michigan for Rocky Boyman. I'm Mike Corey, our entire ESPN crew. Hope you have a great rest of your night, everyone.